loved him. I loved him. I loved him. But was I in love with him? Hey guys, welcome back to Spooky Tuesday, a weekly podcast where we're breaking down all of our favorite <laughs> slashers, thrillers, monster movies, and black comedies on the new scariest day of the week. I'm Cindy Thompson. I'm Monica Hyatt. And I'm Chelsea Duff. And this week... This week, I think we're doing... I don't know about Chelsea, but this is a quintessential Monica Sydney movie. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea, you can enter the fray, but I do not know if you will want to. <laughs> Can't tell by your vibe. But what should movie, I reveal? Is that a surprise? After, <laughs> after I tell them what movie that we're doing. At okay. Least, uh, we are doing the very memeable, very uh, now. Current. Much discussed. Uh, yeah. Much discussed. There's a lot of I mean, this movie only came out recently. There's so much like lore. This so course. much. Yeah, about it. And that is uh 2003 Saltburn. And I'm just gonna go ahead and read the IMDB line because it is oh my god, there's so many of them. Okay, hold on. I would just read the first one because it's the shortest. A student at Oxford University finds himself drawn into the world of a charming and aristocratic classmate who invites him to his eccentric family's sprawling estate for a summer never to be forgotten. I like, I like that. it. Yeah. I like that a lot. And also I tell the people why we're doing Saltburn right now, other than because you guys like it. But why this why is this week a week that we can do Saltburn? It's not a fifth Friday, it's a fifth Tuesday. <laughs> It's a fifth Tuesday, but also it's, it's yeah. only the fourth spooky Tuesday of this month since we took off the first one. So actually this kind of brings in a conversation that we were sort of touching on before we started recording of like fifth Tuesdays are bonuses. We get to do whatever we want. Sometimes we like to pick something that has like kind of horror vibes, like how I was yeah, trying to squeeze in Josie life. and the Blood. Pussycats before we invented fifth Tuesday um something that can be viewed through a horror lens exactly um and this one has elements it's got elements uh for sure totally so. there's blood there's blood <laughs> there's blood i would say it's like a gothic romance a kind gothic. of thriller it definitely is that for sure but i mean one of our listeners said to me today this is a horror movie. So, uh, well, there you go. <laughs> there you actually, go. Yeah. Actually, I guess it so... depends on who you're Is it a Fifth to. Tuesday? Is this a regular Tuesday? It's dealer's choice. Here's the thing to some people, this is a horror movie. To me, it's a beautiful love story, actually. <laughs> a me, beautiful it's just love everything? story yeah. between a man and a plot of dirt. And um... between a man, a plot of dirt, a man, a bathtub, a man, his best friend's sister, a man, his best friend, a man, his best friend's cousin, a man, his best friend's mom, you know, a man, an opulence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's, uh, man, I mean, I'm so glad we're doing this, regardless of it, if it is a horror movie or not. I just like, Something about this movie. I, I get it why there's been so much fucking discourse because it, it really has a fucking shit ton going on with it. Like Emerald Fennel, who's the writer and director um, and a babe and the best. And I've watched probably three hours of interviews with her. Uh, so I feel like we're really good friends now. Uh, um, she it, like really put it all into this movie, like every second of it. There is so much going on. Um and I can see why it made people really fucking upset, but also I can't see that at all. <laughs> and I no. disagree. <laughs> no. Yeah, a lot of the and those people I've are weak. Had is like it's not as scandalous as everybody is saying. Why is everybody saying it's so scandalous? Other than thank you, I think a lot of people tricked unsuspecting victims into watching this movie over the yes. holiday season, and so people were expecting a normal movie and not a freak movie. Well, and here's the thing too: I could imagine watching this with like my dad and mm -hmm. him looking at me being like Sydney what the fuck and I'd yeah, be like, like when yeah. I made my parents watch bottoms my dad was like that was stupid <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> what I could see <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> I could see Keep going, Sid, sorry. being in a movie theater and sitting next to a stranger and having like an uncomfortable like mm -hmm. interaction 
But I'm so glad I me, me and Monica <laughs> held hands on a couch on New Year's Day and watched it in the dark. It was a beautiful moment between us. It was so stunning. Um, Our friend Devin yeah. was there. We were all bucketing. Yeah. It was lovely. It was beautiful. It was the best way to start out the year. Of course, sandwiched between all of the Twilight movies as one must do on and uh, New Year's Day. And a bag Day. of pasta. A bag of cooked pasta with no sauce. Just, <laughs> no, just, 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 just some cooked <laughs> pasta noodles, in a bag. Yeah. Cold. That's what you're supposed to do. Watching this movie. In a big Ziploc bag. It's actually, it's also, it's a Canada event. There was no way for that it's not to be It's New Year's tradition occurred. now, actually. It really is. But but yeah, no, I could see how someone would be horrified by this if they don't watch any of the same movies that I watch. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I was talking to Claire from Sunday Scaries about this and like, sorry, Claire, if I'm misquoting you, but she didn't like it that much because she wanted it to be more insane. Um, But then like we got Vanna who does the podcast. Um, What is it? Carnal Extremities. Is that the name of yeah, the podcast? Yeah, that sounds right. She loves fucking hardcore shit, and she was fucking obsessed with this movie, too. So, like, Claire thought it wasn't extreme enough. Extreme person, Vanna, thought it was great for other fucking reasons. But, like, a normie, like you're saying, my dad, if my dad watched this, um, I, I told you guys, I think, on the pod about when I brought him to see Uncut Gems, and then the <laughs> end happened, and he was like, oh, God, like, out loud, oh, God, oh, no. And I was like, dad, we are in public. Like, this would be something that would, like, your religious aunt would blush so hard that she passed out. You know what I mean? Here's like, the thing. You get the, there's, it's very irreverent, but if you're a queer person uh, who loves kinky shit. If you're then online. It's, then it's yeah, every day. Then it's just every day. This is what I want to see every day. I've said this before. I grew up on unsupervised internet access. I've oh, seen God. people be beheaded on the internet. <laughs> Like, but also, like, okay, when I was still in my theater era for this movie, um, yes. so last week, so currently, very recently, currently, like, we don't she know. watched this movie it's a literally, she watched it for the first time at 1 30 p.m. today, it is 5 p.m. <laughs> Here's the thing, though, I didn't need processing time because, by virtue of being a very online person. I already knew basically everything that was going to happen in this movie because people have been talking about it endlessly and discussing it. And until you guys said you wanted to do it for Fifth Tuesday, I really was not confident that I was going to watch it myself anytime soon. So I was not like avoiding spoilers by any means. I'm curious Mm -hmm. about discourse because I love online pop culture discussions. Um, But when I was still in my hater era and Manu and I were hanging out like a week or two ago, um and we were like everyone says it's so scandalous blah 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 i don't know why they're saying that like national lampoons van wilder has things that are more disgusting than what's going on in this movie like oh someone is slurping cum in national lampoons van wilder which i bought on itunes in middle school they jerk off a bulldog and fill a donut with dog cum and then somebody eats it like there's lots of insane things in movies all over and as long as you call it a comedy mostly people don't blink an eye like as Here's long as it's a men's college comedy, you can do anything. So we are just built different. This is actually this generation. This is a men's college comedy, kind of. In yeah, ways. no, it's a dark comedy for sure, and it's yeah. college, and it's uh, college, and there's boys. I think it's so just British, here. so it's not. Yeah, the it's same. different vibes. It's no, think, it's not Animal House vibes. Yeah, I think the queer longing and desperation. Um, upset some people that I don't like to associate with. You know what I mean? It upsets I only... the people that also just secretly deep down want to queer yearn, you know, but they're too afraid to. Mm. The elements of class consciousness in the film elevate it beyond something like National Lampoon's Van Wilder. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Wow, I'm so excited. Does this mean you liked it? Oh my god. Maybe. Don't don't say. Don't say. We're don't not ready yet. I don't know. I'm not I don't want to get a reveal yet. after two hours and 45 minutes. <laughs> I Chelsea will actually review at the end, end of the pod. Until that point, I'll just keep talking until then. Yeah, you know me. I love to go. Oh, man. I also think one more thing about why people are, are like this. <laughs> people are the way they are. I think they were um, lured in by the lordy of it all. <laughs> I'm going to kill myself. I like so that. sorry I like for that. that. So no, sorry. I thought it was great. <laughs> But he's so the moment right now um, and every yeah. moment for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, Here's the thing. Emerald gave us 
something that we all want in a movie, and that is a pre-made Jacob Elordi fan cam. That's Ooh. true, actually. Seriously. Because, like, that is part of my resistance, that, like, my experience with Jacob Elordi is mostly um, the contained to booth. the Kissing Booth movies. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm I'm a Kissing Booth hater. Um, so They're not very good, but I watched them all. So but I watched them I did. all, yeah. Um, did I watch them and- all? Yes, of course. Yeah, of course you have to. It, it's a must. Um, but it is like, I don't know. I just I I see the appeal in him. He's very tall. He's charming. Um, he's six but five. then they had those close ups and the details and the golden light kissing his skin and the little peach fuzz on his face illuminated in the outline. And I was like, okay, I guess this, like, this is at least gonna be this is at least gonna be beautiful to watch. Yeah, Chelsea's like. Maybe I do. Maybe a like... man is beautiful. Well, maybe um, a man Farley, is beautiful. Actually no, the he one is baby girl. Farley, I thought was beautiful too. That Farley first scene in the beautiful. tutoring office, Isaac, like, he is stunning. He's literally glowing. He's got a little kiss of glitter on his oh. cheeks. Um, oh my god! Oh, before and I didn't see I just... why anybody had talked about him online. I didn't even know he existed. So, like, where is oh, his I love, love for this Archie? Though? He is so good in this movie. Oh, my God. I mean, just so you know, here's a little tag. Here's a little uh, kick in the pants to get you to go to our YouTube and follow us, to subscribe to us there and watch this because we are all dressed up as the 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 three stars of the film. Not Farley, though. Sorry. Um, oh, <laughs> balloons. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just dressed up as Felix um she's got an a, eyebrow ring it's she does. pretty incredible or he does sorry to he does. Yeah. oh my god oh, oh, wow Classic i can't Amazon. believe you misgenders me <laughs> you could only refer to me as felix for the rest of the podcast no actually it'd be really confusing <laughs> <laughs> but yeah what I, are you um, saying, King? i look like i'm doing drag for this episode and i look fucking hot they've all said that <laughs> They, even if they didn't say it, they're thinking it, Adam is attracted to me in a whole new way. I said, I, I walked in and I was like, how does this make you feel? <laughs> uh, you did a really be... good job with your hair, though. Like, I mean, it yeah. is genuinely very impressive. The hair like, is a slice. Even when you turn your head to the side a little. No, I don't want to see because I don't want the mystery. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it. I, yeah, at don't the, break the illusion. At the end, I will reveal. It looks like there's ends on the end of it. Thank you. Hairspray. And I have bangs, so it worked out really nice. Um, And I used spirit gum to keep this fucking eyebrow piercing stuck to my face because it kept popping off and it hurt really bad. But now it's just glued to my face. So looks incredible. The illusion of makeup. Um, But Sydney, who are you? I'm Venetia, Felix's sister. Also, something that I want to discuss, possible ex-lover was there notes of incest i think Ooh. in this movie incest was Just... like subtext primarily you know like, what i mean i think but he did accidentally finger his cousin so i uh, and she she has a line we'll, we'll talk about it later but i'm just saying monica oh i mean just like that's, gonna kiss? Every once in a while. that's crazy and then chelsea who are you um, I am an ingenue. I am a star pupil. I am um an up and comer in society. Um, I've noticed I'm, that about you. Uh, an orphan. I'm. I'm. I. Well, I have a mother still, but my father tragically has passed away. Um, I. You I'm know. So sorry for your loss. Have boundless potential to create a new me. Um, and but you're people call me all over quick. And I'm you're fucking and I'm poor, poor, but like in a sexy, alluring way. Maybe you're Ooh. you're intrigued by my tragic past. You do yeah, have the glasses. Have, there's something about you, um, Chelsea, or should I say, Oliver? Um, Ollie, where, when you when you tell me about how your dad is dead and how you stuck your fingers down your mommy's throat, that's like really like I'm into that. I actually oh like God. that. Give me a your full lot. attention at a party. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're dressed to the nines. We look fucking sexy. So go to YouTube and you'll see that for yourself. But I guess we should fucking get into it with this movie because I have 10 pages of notes. Uh- <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, this, I don't know. Like, first of all, first and foremost, the setting. Let's just talk about it. Um, this movie is such a fucking period piece. But it the period is two thousand fucking six, <laughs> which is like a little upsetting. I know. Yeah, because the ideal because period like, piece is like two thousand three. 
obviously. Well, the idea of peeling your own piece is like the 1800s. Exactly. (laughs) Because, like, when you, in 2006. When you think of the English countryside, wealthy people, society. Yeah, but also just like 2006, I was in 10th grade, you know, like, Mm -hmm. um, this also takes place around the same time as Gossip Girl. Yeah. Actually, okay, actually, I'm watching Gossip Girl right now for the first time. Um, And I oh, also fun. started reading, the, I read the books in middle school, and so I was really, really resistant to the show when it came out, because I was like, they've changed things. Um, But now You've it's been long been enough yourself. that I'm, I know, it's who I am. Um, <laughs> now I'm further away from reading the books. Now it's been 15 years between me and reading the books, so I'm like, I'm ready for this journey. Um, <laughs> And so the Gossip Girl of it all is right there. You with the Dan Humphrey to Joe transition is right there. Mm-hmm. You season yes. four is very this movie. Yes. Um, but also, this is just more of a fun fact for everybody. Um, in watching the Gossip Girl show and having read the books, I was on the Gossip Girl book Wikipedia page recently, and I Classic. discovered that the author Cecily Monsagaser wrote an alternate universe version of book one in which Blair and Serena are murderers. Oh, serial killers. So I'm reading oh, that now. Everybody else should Down. join my book club. Yep. No, All right. Send it to send, me. Send, send me that, that now. Send chat it right now. Send I it need literally it. right now. Mm-hmm. I'm I so will. interested in that. No, but yeah, I mean, like, period piece. Yes, it feels like a period piece because it's the English countryside. It's in this fucking gorgeous goddamn manor house that is like the craziest thing ever. But also, I just can't get over how well Emerald fucking nailed the vibe of 2006. 2006 like the well she put the, the juicy sweatpants in like first thing after yes. she showed class of 2006 so she was like oh. i mean it well the i clothing, said it was 2006 and i stand look at it the clothing the soundtrack was so the soundtrack was like the sound here's the thing I, everything i to this day still have the audio tick of it's mother on the dance floor like and i'll just be by myself stop. I can't stop. I'll be dead. I think we all have that because now it's just everywhere. Yeah, the resurgence cool. of it, and as it should. I I loved that song. Well, it's back just, in the day, I mean, I didn't even listen to that song back then. But it's just like all the other songs were so perfect, and also the lyrics in them are weirdly thematic. Like there's so so many like perfect lyrics in the songs that like play to what's actually happening on screen like some of the lyrics to time to pretend once we get there later like don't let me forget like are what happens in the movie which is weird um like they're sing along to Mr. Brightside the fact that no cars go by Arcade Fire is playing in the moment when like Ollie is first accepted by uh Felix in the pub like that mm. that song is so like emotional to me. I just love Arcade Fire, so it just like felt poignant because that song feels poignant. Like it's just it's perfect. I was listening to uh all these interviews, right? And one of them that's linked, um, it's a YouTube video with a, a podcaster. His name escapes me right now, but they were talking about the Christmas song. Even was like this t- early Y two K christmas song by like a band called the cheeky girls and it's called like have a cheeky christmas and how she like agonized over the christmas song that would be playing during the christmas party that oliver wasn't invited to for forever trying to figure it out and she had like an epiphany moment i'll look up what it exactly was but also let's not forget that the opening song of this movie is zadok the priest yeah, which is so perfect. It's but so also incredible. It's so incredible, but if you listen really carefully, they change the uh, lyrics, don't they? They change the lyrics and it says Oliver Quick. Yeah. is the king or something like that. Like the first lyrics of the song, like it's supposed to say, you know, something else Zadok is the king or something like that. Um, but yeah, they changed it to Oliver Quick. So there's just there's so many little details like that in this movie where they give it all the fuck away if you're paying attention, but you can't. There's no way you'd ever yeah. catch it on the first go round. And you visually, know I love there's an so Easter much to egg. pay attention to. Yeah, totally. that, and and also it's so beautiful that it's like you just want to look. You don't want to be processing all of that information as well. You can't pause think, every so second. Pretty. Yeah, I think a lot of that was also like 
I saw a lot of discourse before I watched the movie that some of the songs were anachronistic to the time and didn't come out until later. And so I think some of that must have been like, but this song works too perfectly for this scene for me to leave it out, even if it didn't come out until 2008, 2009, whatever it was. Mm, Yeah, I didn't go and look up every single one of them, but I'm sure. There's also another thing with like, um, uh, what is it? Oh my God, I'm blinking. The movie, Super Bad. Super Bad oh, yeah. came out in August of 2007. And so um, they're saying this, this was like a supposed to screener or something yeah. like that. They're like, these oh, are rich people. Up. They get access to they whatever they want. Yeah. It's, yeah. Didn't you like, see Devil I... Wears Prada? Rich people can just demand things. She wants the new Harry Potter book for her twins. I think that it is. Speaking I, of I Harry Potter, that... Felix is reading I know. one of the books in this. They're and do all they all fuck each other? Throughout. Are they having a threesome? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's where <laughs> incense evidence potentially. Uh-huh. No, totally. But yeah, I don't know. I, it was so interesting watching this all the times I've watched it now, which is four times. Um, the first <laughs> time, yes. I didn't get okay, I haven't watched like the last 30 minutes for the fourth time because I got up to the scene under the Minotaur statue we'll get there later and then we have to start recording anyway but like I watched it with Sydney we had had a supplement um and it was New Year's Day so obviously not firing on all cylinders we were Um, just there for vibes experiencing a lot and experiencing emotions it was the emotional watch I was just like feeling it all feeling it all feeling that Sydney's hand in my hand as we experience true eroticism on screen feeling <laughs> her other hand in a large bag of cold pasta <laughs> it was a fully sensory experience one hand in Sydney's one hand in a bag of cold pasta that's like that it's whole- like when you go to the haunted house you <laughs> yes, know and they make you touch the, the grapes. field grapes yeah yes. <laughs> it's just like that it was just like that that's a really it's an important part of the viewing experience if you haven't watched it with a, your hand in a bag of pasta what are you doing your hand's getting like a little starchy from the cold dry pasta like but okay the, so the second time i watched it was four days later i watched it with adam and adam um has like light version of what a lawyer of the podcast alex has which is extreme movie anxiety um my boy adam is an anxious boy and this movie pat like hit all of his anxiety buttons in the first 45 minutes and that was a really interesting no i mean it it's it's funny but it's also like made me see the movie differently because the beginning of this movie is so agonizing watching it for the first time and feeling sympathetic to oliver because Mm -hmm. it is just like i was just watching adam watch it and just feel so bad for Oliver because he's like a fucking loser at the beginning of this movie which like there's being so mean he looks like just a normal fucking guy everyone calm down but it is his Oxford. style is rank so apparently he dressed like two Oxford academic. at the beginning academic dark he's academia like, oh, I take my education seriously all these other bitches are here to party and then he's like I want to party yeah I guess, I'll, I guess I'll wear a hoodie Farley, true to form, roasts him moment from moment one. Doesn't even know to hate him yet. Um, just Used saw him and was like, seven times Fuck in his you. essay. Yeah, <laughs> he literally Regina Georged him. He literally was like, "Oh, I love he your Gretchen skirt." Gretchen Wieners him. He Farley Gretchen is not Regina is- George. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, but I also have been says- watching. I saw Mean Girls the musical, and then I watched the actual musical after that to compare and contrast. And I feel like that's also related to this watch. Okay, I that that makes sense. The interloper. But like, it the beginning is just it's just so agonizing, like watching him be left out of everything. Like that, like voyeurism is like kind of like a theme throughout the whole thing with like being watched and watching like how Oliver watches Felix, how everyone in the house is being watched at all time because of all the workers who work in the the house always being the around, staff. always watching the staff. Duncan. Thank you. Yeah, but like at this this beginning part where he's just so left out, you really feel for him. I mean, I feel like we know what happens later on in this movie, but I feel like they did a really good job of making you sympathetic to Oliver in the beginning. At least it was that's how it was for me. I didn't have that experience because I came in knowing too much. Mm. Um, 
and he associated himself with the guy who plays Aemon Targaryen in House of Dragons for too long, or House of the Dragon for too long, and that yeah, guy had such rank him. vibes. Oh. It's not that like he was is bad in that show and is evil in that show or whatever. I ha- actually but haven't watched that show, but I know everything from Tumblr. In this um, movie, though, yeah, in this movie, he's mm-hmm. being like, "Oh, these dumb cunts, blah blah blah. We don't want to be friends with them anyway." Ask me a sum. Like he uh, is. He was like, iconic. Vibes are insane. You know what I mean? So like that was I get so relatable. You have no friends. You, You're like, I might as well have this one person who wants to talk to me. Um, but do you guys not remember freshman year of fucking college when you were friends with the people who just were right next to you and you were like, This is so um uncomfortable, but I need to talk to someone. I didn't <laughs> no. have someone quite as psychotic as that guy, but like you have your the, your first quarter freshman year friends are an interesting breed of people. <laughs> I went to school with like half of the people that I went to high school and like a bunch of cousins and I was she fun and already. outgoing. So I and I knew a bunch of like people that yeah. were already there. So like and like I'm a hot sexy people person, so I immediately yeah. found my perfect crowd. So like I guess I can't relate to that, Monica. Yeah. Okay, like, I, I was yeah. never a fucking loser. So, <laughs> so fine, bite your bitch ass tongue and sit down. I'm just saying, like week one and two before the club fair, Adam, I was not a loser. Get out of here. He walks in, gives me a fucking look. I just remember that I went to like the fucking like hang out that our RA put together like zero yeah. week when it's and just so, like your freshman like fall, zero, fall like, friends yeah, oh, yeah. I, I never lived in a dorm so okay this is, this is the kind of thing I had a, a duplex off campus oh my god you're immediately off campus living that's so cool she's always so been a cool girl does that surprise you no I, just wanna... I guess not I can't believe Adam just came in here to roast me too. I've always been also popular and a people person, <laughs> Chelsea. I, so go fuck yourself. <laughs> but anyway, I wish we had another I, camera angle just to see Adam's face that we could. Cut. He literally walked in and he was like, mm, "Little fucking bitch, I'm gonna talk shit on you on the episode now, Adam." I already did. I told him about your movie anxiety. Anyway, I'm feeling very um. How could anyone be mean to me when I look so sexy like Jacob Bellordi right now? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm anyway. just lashing out because he doesn't understand his feelings towards you when you look like it's this. It's confusing. There's a lot to take in. I'm questioning things about myself. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, anyway, back to the, the movie. I mean, I just thought that they did a good job of making you feel for him. And also just the shots did such a good job of of expressing his longing for Felix like even before their first meeting like every time he's anywhere like he is situated so he can see him you know and he's always in the corner of the shot or something like that and so I think they do a good job of establishing the crush or the infatuation but yeah from there i don't know i don't want to just That's go it. on all my rants for forever i could keep going <laughs> uh my thing is is especially in the beginning it's a little odd you know what i mean like it does feel a little too coincidental that he's like looking at this guy and then all of a sudden like jacob lordy is a damsel in distress and then oliver comes and is just he happens to be there. He happens to do all this stuff. But in your brain, because you don't realize what a psychopath Oliver is yet, you are very sympathetic to him. And you're like, oh, this is like so nice. This is how like this is what you would want, I guess, for yourself a little bit. That situation. The way they write the dialogue between them, the way that they have Jacob Alordi just assuming like, oh, and you're going to take my bat bike yes. back too. Like. They write in that enough for you to be like, maybe this is just what everybody does for people like him. Maybe this is just how he's a Regina George. Everyone just falls at his feet. You know what I mean? Well, for me, I think that was like the first because there's a lot of reads that I've read of this where people are like, oh, my God, Oliver evil, Oliver bad, blah, 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 blah. The poor Catons, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like. I think they set the groundwork for everyone being fucking horrible from, like, the, the get. Because, like, that's so fucking presumptuous of Jacob Alordi to be like, oh, you're giving me, I'm oh, sorry, a Felix. 
like, oh, you're giving me your bike. You're going to take my bike back, right? You know what I mean? I feel like he's showing his cards as like a little like rich boy who has everything done for him like right away. You know what I mean? Because everyone's like, I think in the grand scheme of the movie, probably Jacob or God, I'm going to call him Felix. Felix is probably the sweetest uh, of all of the characters i would say and they say that about him and yeah. to him yeah he, he's such a he is a sweet guy he does go out of his way to once he becomes friends with ollie to like protect him in the way that he can to defend him to his other rich bitch friends who are saying fucked up things about him like he does really genuinely care about him but he does as long just... as it's to his benefit though well, yeah, exactly. It's to just some like, degree from the goodness of his heart, but there are the this is the family caveats. is like this is the nice but not kind family. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like when I don't want to hang out with you anymore and I don't want you around, I'm not gonna tell you because to me it seems meaner to be like you're not invited than it is to just not fucking invite you even though you're gonna find out. Well, because at the end of the day, it's all about Felix. For Felix, it's all about Felix. And if I looked like him, I mean, right now I'm feeling really full of myself. Um, Maybe I would be like that too. But like all of their generosity, all of his love and all of that is like as exactly what Sydney was saying. If it serves him, if he's fascinated by you, it makes him feel good about himself my you know little what I mean? poor friends that i go home and i tell farley everything about his fucking life and then farley tells everybody else that mm-hmm. look on on felix's face when ollie finally like opens up and talks about how his parents are drug addicts and this and that and the other thing he just looks like like he's just like Sucking it up with a straw. Oh my god, He's this like, is my opportunity to be so good and help someone. Look at me. Everyone's gonna be like, Felix, you're so nice for taking Oliver under your wing. Mm-hmm. Felix, well, you're so good hearted for letting this loser into your friend group. Yeah, or also well, like it makes me so much it makes him so much cooler and so much more down to earth because he has this crust of the earth friend, you know what I mean? Well, did either of y'all watch the David Beckham uh, documentary? No, but I are you talking about that one clip? Yeah. So I watched the whole documentary and I loved it. But it, this movie also like vaguely weirdly talks about class issues, but maybe in it doesn't oh, really get into it. Yeah. And like, but also it, the it message touches. is like a bad message, I guess. That like if you're the message, super mega think, rich, be yeah. beware of the poor is trying to get oh close to you. Oh my god. But it's it scary also, out there. But it also goes into the David Beckham uh posh spice thing where the class system in the UK is like so weird. Mm, I think we it's like have here, I'll let you talk and then I'll say something. Because like to live in a house like this, like his father has, is a Sir James. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they is a title. Yes, like they have money that, like, and status that we just like as Americans, where we we have that, but it is not like that. It's not you know the what same. I mean? Like, yeah, people it's not don't the same. have fucking Versailles style estates in the mm-hmm. in yes. the U.S. They don't have I mean, fucking they do, gardens. But, well, okay, not, I mean, but, but like the average not, rich person, you know. But they're not. If you have that kind of space, you're in the middle of nowhere, and yes. maybe you also have your like my city flat or whatever. Like at the end, where she's like, "Oh, I have a flat." Um, but, but if you have that kind of space, you're not like the rich people who are throwing parties because nobody's traveling but, like that to but the also middle too, of nowhere. They're working class, and this goes to like David Beckham and Posh Spice. She was very much adamant, being like, "We were a working class family, like we were working worked. class." And but yes, and David mm-hmm. Beckham was like, "What car did your dad drop you off to school in?" And she was like, "A Rolls Royce." <laughs> and so, like, and so David Beckham grew up in what America would consider like a working class family, but even like the working class in the uk compared to like what we would think it is is so different than like the aristocratic uh yeah it's all on a different level like my um 
Adam's cousin, um, he goes to Oxford and he that'll brag. Get this. <laughs> they, they they are fancy. They're European. Um, he's very cool and he's so fucking smart. So I'm sure he's slaying it over there. Um, shout outs to him. Um, but he wore out his fucking tuxedo like in the first semester because there's that many fucking like black tie tuxedo yeah. events. Like oh, that's black tie for dinner every for night. Dinner? Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying I mean, that he's some like ritzy guy. I'm not saying that. I mean, I, it's just like that's, that's the society yeah. at Oxford. It yes. is a whole different thing, you know. Like UCLA, there's there's but... mm-hmm. there's there's date parties, and I didn't even go to those because yeah. I wasn't in a sorority. <laughs> you know, like there's it's not like that. <laughs> Going to private school, you have some elements of that where it's like the there's the general American experience of like so many people think that they are middle class when they are either very wealthy or lower class, working class. And like everybody just kind of assumes that they must be in the middle. And that's like really not true. But there were so many people at our school who are like, I'm not rich because this other person's family has a private plane or whatever. You know what I mean? Like when you know someone who is richer than you, you just assume that you must be the middle then. Um, And so I think that's kind of what we see in this movie to some degree a little bit is like the people who are wealthy and well off are like but that guy's dad is a lord and they have a castle so like (laughs) i'm clear you know what i mean like the comparison of it is what really skews the the perspective of it a lot of the time but Mm -hmm. then again america is only 300 years old you know and then we're england yeah it's like a whole just different setup over there but also like speaking of america versus england you get farley who is their American cousin. Oh my yeah. God, about his American feelings. Ugh. But also too, Farley, I think might be one of my favorite characters oh my in God, yeah. this movie because he is so fascinating because so Farley's mom and Sir James were siblings, but she like ran off and wanted to be like wild and moved to America. Wild and America. They kind of disowned her a little bit because uh, she married and had, a child with an American uh, black man and they being posh British people were like, "Mm, no. That's too wild for us. It's kind of the subtext of it. Yeah. 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 And so they like cut her off and something happened with his dad. She spent too much money. Yeah. Uh, Like bankrupted. Yeah. But they wanted, uh, Sir James was like, we're still going to pay for his education because we do believe that he should have an education. He's family. It's only fair. But so Farley is like his mom is having to beg for money from her brother, like his uncle. But Farley is like living this lifestyle immersed in it. And so in a way he's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And even Oliver is like, oh, I don't see color. Like, you know that. Okay, whatever. But Farley gets a, like, he's, he feels like... (laughs) I've I've had my thumb out and it took it as a thumbs up. It it so I was it not. Monica is yeah, liking I was, what I'm putting down. I was not so, thumbs upping. I don't see color to me. She said I don't see color. <laughs> no, Monica. No, no, no. I get it. No, uh, no, 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 no. Keep going. She was really <laughs> in character as Felix for a moment there. <laughs> so, um. Farley kind of gets this like false sense of security thinking that he's actually one of them when in fact as they demonstrate they will absolutely like drop you like a hot potato mercy yeah yes which is something that I think this whole family loves because that's what they're used to they love to have the little philanthropic moment. They love to say, Pamela, of course you can come stay for as long as you want. And that's, again, the nice, not kind thing of, like, they won't say you have to go. They'll go, oh, my God, of course you don't want to be here anymore. And I don't blame you. It's so wonderful that you found a little bed to be in instead of being here. Like, of course you – it must be so annoying to be around us all of the time. You're so, You're right. You're right when you say you should go. 
That's well, so British too. It's yeah. just so it's so interesting because you can see where Felix learned it from because it mm -hmm. became come becomes clear once Oliver gets to Saltburn and we're jumping all around, but we'll get back to wherever, whenever, or we won't, uh, or we won't, <laughs> or we won't. But like all of it becomes clear to Oliver that he is not the first boy to be brought back to Saltburn for the summer, and he certainly well. He wouldn't maybe have been the last um and um you, like you know something went wrong with the last boy the last play thing that felix brought home you know and then you see where he learned it from from elspeth his fabulous mother doing the exact such same a thing to pamela that's her name right uh -huh. uh, just being like yeah like i thought you were so interesting i thought you were so beautiful but i'm bored of you now i'm tired of you now your problems really are um kind of burdensome and annoying to hear about so the time has passed and my generosity ends they're generous they'll give you thousands and thousands of dollars worth of stuff but the second that you don't entertain them anymore you're worthless to them and you're gone and You're so done. it's so it's fickle. They're a fickle, fickle group of people. The Catons are very fickle. They have their own definition of generosity and it's got a timestamp on it. But you won't know until you won't know the talk, clock's ticking until it's already the bells rung. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, it's just so it's so interesting, like. You know, I love watching this movie for the first time. I loved watching it with Adam, seeing his anxieties at the beginning, like I was saying. And I love watching it even the third time, like really diving into seeing the manipulation on Oliver's part in the beginning. Because like, what a sad act of desperation to be like, I know what will get Felix back. My dad's dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Like, it's just, it's so interesting and brilliant, you know, if we're going to give him props for being a manipulator. Um, but yeah, I mean, back to, sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit, but back to what I was just saying about, like, their generosity having a timestamp on it. It's the same thing with what breaks Felix and Ollie up the first time anyway, where, like, they're hanging out. It's become, like, this powder keg situation. They're too, they're close. They're with each other all the time. They're, like, brothers. But gazing then, into like, each other's eyes. Gazing into each other's eyes, spending every waking moment with each other. Pitching cheeks. Yes. Picking They're love bombing the hell out of each other. Exactly. And then, you know, it gets too hot to handle, literally and physically, because there's a heat wave in um, the area at the time. But, like, the second that Oliver isn't just fawning over Felix, he criticizes him one time, and Felix can't fucking handle it. And, like, he questions his agency and questions, like, when he brings up the rich boy shit, like, you know, a lot of times, like, rich people just like to pretend that that's not the case. And they're, they're cosplaying just, like, as everybody normies. else. Yeah, totally. And so, yeah, that's, like, he gets called out for being a slob because he's used to everyone. As you see later on in Salt at Saltburn if there's a mess it's gone before you can even notice that it happened so he's used that's to my that. dream oh my god yeah jesus christ i say my house is i'm trying to clean it's so bad it's hard it's, it's nice hard here. to clean your own mess <sighs> it really is it really fucking is um but yeah like the second he's criticized he's like you know what can you get the fuck out of here i'm smothered by you and i'm not gonna invite you to the party um but Oh, also, sorry, one more thing about them, like, using you until they're bored. The same the same thing is mirrored with the girl, um, the girl who he was hooking up with, who mm -hmm. Ollie later on hooks up with. Like, you know, Felix just, like, forgot about her, you know, because something else came along and he can have whatever he wants, as is evidenced earlier when he just, like, snaps his finger at that other girl and they go, fuck. Um, or he but, didn't like, forget about her, but he wanted somebody else instead, and he was like, it would be mean to tell her, so I'm just gonna say nothing. Exactly, yeah, either way. But, like, it just, you see her experiencing the pain of not being in his favor either, and she's only fucking yeah. Ollie because... Ollie's he, close to Felix. Because he's close to Felix. And something I want to pigeon, or not pigeonhole, that is not what I'm, put a pin in for later. Just the pigeon sexual pin. pigeon pin. 
the sexual <laughs> prowess of Oliver, of Ollie, um, because when he's hooking up with that girl in the dorm, he doesn't look like he knows what he's doing. But then we see later on that we that he does. For does. Sure. He's a quick study, but he does need to study. Oliver, quick. Eh. Hey, that's what they call me. Yeah. That's um, my name. Don't wear it out. Before things get f- super sad, I just want to say um, that the scene where Felix does ask Oliver to come to Saltburn, he's so baby girl in that scene. <laughs> yes. Lordy. It's just so like, well, you could come stay at my house. Uh, <laughs> I know I've talked all this shit about him. And it was so, it's just so cute. It's so hard. There's so much going on with this movie because I was just so enamored by the romance. Like he has first. charisma. Yeah. So He's got much... crazy charisma. They have great chemistry. They have unbelievable well, chemistry. Well, obviously, didn't you see their press tour where yeah, Jacob of started I did. getting down to pick up the coffee cup? It's, that clip plays in my brain oh. all the time. All the and, time. And that's what led to the reveal that, you know, the kiss that never was actually was. Because in an interview... <sighs> Barry Keoghan, who I just want to say really quickly, we've been talking about Jacob Elordi. Barry Keoghan, I don't care if he's like 5'5". Five, five. That's a he's lesbian like five. that I want. He's, he's like, <laughs> That's the lesbian for me. I am so into him. Holy shit. I love his like, style. <laughs> he's like my height. Oh, well, that's fine. I, yeah. Are you 5'9"? Yeah. Oh, okay. He just looks so short next to Jacob Elordi. Jacob That's because Jacob is 6'5". So yeah. <laughs> He makes everyone look like a tiny little infant baby. And then they paired him with Joey King in the kissing booth. It was outrageous. Yes, outrageous. Dude, I just saw my cousin, and she's 4'10". 4'10". That's guess you how, and... Guess how tall her boyfriend is. 6'3". Don't say 6'3". Six, six, don't say no, it. No, he's six fucking five. He's literally 6'5". Oh, that's... Oh, my God. That's um Hayden that's Payne into your dating name. an NBA player status or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. That's anyway, like very much upset me from catching a case. I'm just That's like Shaq and his girlfriend. They're back the in same the day age. When he had that tiny little girlfriend. They're the same it age. It doesn't matter. It feels wrong, you know. <laughs> That's what the internet says. Sometimes isn't that so crazy when internet is like big height gap is actually age gap coded. That's yeah. not how oh it works, God. you guys. <laughs> Gen Z, please calm down. We just gotta relax. <laughs> if people are people outside of their bodies. They just really, they just are interested in their personalities. <laughs> anyway, um. But yeah, I just like the romance is so palpable. And what I was saying before with Barry Keoghan, who I finally figured out how to say his name and I can say it confidently now. It's very exciting. Um, He revealed in an interview, he was like, you know, people think like, oh, we're so close, but like we're just really comfortable with each other. Like we our faces are always so close to each other. But like once I'm comfortable with you, I'm comfortable with you with whatever amount of closeness or whatever. He's like, and we just got finished doing a movie where we needed to make out with each other. So like, blah, 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 blah. And we were like, um, where's the Snyder and cut? Like, Hold on. Yeah. Well, where's the Fennel cut? <laughs> Emerald Fennel said she would like never release any of those scenes, I think, because she's like, I don't want it to impact people's viewing of the film at all. But I did see on IMDb trivia that they had a lot of like, fantasy scenes that were part of the script originally as well so it could have been like a fantasy scene rather than something that ever actually like happened in reality in the storyline and like there were fantasy scenes where Felix and Oliver like switched roles as part of the fantasy where like Oliver was Felix and Felix was Oliver interesting yeah so there was a lot of stuff that they were playing with in like the imagining of what's going on as part of the like characters moving through the story. So what that kiss was when they filmed it, we don't know, but we I'm, do know that the actors have kissed and that's what's important. That's very important. And to I me. need to I will, see it. I'm going to dream about it. Um anyway, and I need to see it. It will not I, change my perspective of this movie. I think, honestly, I'm glad that they didn't kiss because, like, I think that the, you know me, you know I love to pine, you know I love longing, Um, and especially with everything that happens later on in the movie, yeah, I gotta let it linger, Um, I think it was a good choice for them to not actually have that come to fruition and have just, like, that energy, because, um, and have him hooking up with everybody else as, like, the stand-in for him yeah, in many ways. I, yeah, totally. I don't know. I think they 
should have kissed at the Minotaur. I scene. think they should have had full frontal in this movie. Yeah, they did, well, they did have. They should, yeah, yeah but I think they they should have kissed. There should have been docking in this film. Should have yes. They should have docked. <laughs> it should, it should have been tip to tip. <laughs> there should have been NC seventeen. There was already there a great all amount British. of dick. Nobody is circumcised, I need to see so that docking is very achievable for them. <laughs> But I do think, like, you know, the Minotaur scene, we're not there yet. We should get there at some point. We're going to get there. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not looking at my timer. Sulfur. I don't know how long it's We're been. 54 <laughs> minutes in, but we started it early, so it's going to be like fine. And I said I wouldn't even reveal <laughs> if I liked it until it's been two hours, 45 minutes. So we're going to talk right for two hours track. and 45 yeah. minutes. I'm on page one of my 10 pages of notes. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, I have so much to say. <laughs> What were you going to say, Sydney? At Saltburn. Um, I think they absolutely should have kissed in the maze. I like. I think it would have been like beautiful and poetic. And again, put my pigeon pin in this and we'll come back to it. The pigeon pin. And I think Oliver could have gone for it in the maze. And I don't think it would have been like a true kiss between them. But like a kiss could have been achieved as part of that scene. Yeah. yeah. I see your vision. I, yeah. I see what you're saying. I still like the way that it plan panned out, but I respect you, and I think that that could have also been awesome. Uh, <laughs> but I respect back to the you, movie. though. That's important. Let's, I respect Let's go to Saltburn, actually. Look, I'm so glad that it seems like Chelsea liked this movie, so I don't have to get really angry. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I didn't. It's a mystery. We still have an hour, 45 Wait, minutes. What if to our it out. 50 more minutes, yeah. What if our <laughs> listeners was like, I didn't like it. You know who you are. I love you. Don't just don't be upset but i was like i can't talk to you <laughs> i was like just wait for the episode because <laughs> i can't talk to you about this right now i'm too vulnerable right now i've only spent eight hours reading you. about this today <laughs> but anyway um so once they get to saltburn um once oliver gets to saltburn things start changing like really quickly and you start seeing how much of a quick study um oliver really is like we were talking about, but before even that happens, just the entrance to Saltburn is so, so, so incredible. And I just want to give a huge shout out to Duncan um, because that actor is fucking amazing. Paul Reese, um, he is the the main butler. He is the guy. And I watched this whole like literally 10 minute long video of Emerald Fennel just breaking down moment by moment the entrance to Saltburn and there's just so much there but like she said like that this this is supposed to be like act two obviously of the movie and you're supposed to immediately feel the sinister nature of the house because of Duncan's presence and she said she was also he was also supposed to feel like he is this like Duncan is the spirit of Saltburn like literally he could be a brick that like created like the the building you know what I mean he's like always been there and he always will be there you know what I mean um and he it's also beauty and the beastie like he's literally furniture in the house but also he's bossing you around yes he he's 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 the protector. attached to the magic of the house yeah yeah he's the protector he's the gargoyle or whatever and and similar to Farley he smells something that stinks about Oliver from the beginning because he is so protective of the home. Um, and he's just like this. He's part of the voyeurism that you feel like throughout the film. But like the the fact that like his eyes specifically are probably always on you or at least always on Oliver. He's always lurking around. Um, yeah. I thought that that was super brilliant. Also, the aspect ratio is a really cool thing about this movie. I can't tell you what it is. It's a, a square. It's maybe it's a square, um, but it's different. It's more square than the average movie. Um, the reason that they did that was because of this house that they filmed it in, um, because it they wanted the house to feel the tall ceilings to feel as 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 tall as they were. They didn't want some of these uh, giant uh. like tapestries on the walls to be cut out cuz like you know when it's wider pan it's like more about what's on the horizontal plane but he mm -hmm. he wanted it to be on the vertical plane which you know plays with like the height and like how you know uh Oliver's smaller he's dwarfed by the house that's that's part of it too um 
I also saw on IMDb trivia that um, Emerald Fennel said using that aspect ratio, which is 1.33 to 1, um, gives the effect of feeling like you're peeping in, quote unquote. So kind of like, okay, do you remember at the beginning of X when it is like the squarish aspect ratio and then it's like, actually, you're looking through the barn doors and then it slowly moves through them and it like changes the aspect ratio. It's kind of like that. Like the effect is almost like you're looking be through a doorway at the movie the whole time. Like you're Ooh, I like that. in on the film. That's the voyeurism once again. That's so cool. Ooh. I love that. That's so cool. Um, but yeah, like the other thing that was so interesting, I mean, it's linked in the in the references. This video is so incredible. Like Emerald Fennel literally, like every second, if you pause it, there's something. Like the second she walks in the door, they walk in the door, there's this picture, there's this shot where you see the chandelier and all these grandiose paintings and blah, 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 blah. But hanging from the chandelier is a piece of fly tape. So that tape that you hang up so th- and it's covered in dead flies. So it's just trying to get you know how you, they like, say Buckingham thing. Palace is like rat infested. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like that. It's supposed to be this like juxtaposition between like this like fucking gorgeous historic fucking home because which king lived in it? I don't know. What oh, okay. the Henry the Eighth Spunk is still on this bed. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like literally like a historic like um monarch landmark fucking i don't know house whatever you call it british words insert estate. here estate um, but like it's juxtaposition with like the things that modern people or modern in 2006 need to live so like there's this one shot of felix's room and there's this like ancient wow what am i saying ancient <laughs> like about hundreds of thousands of dollar tapestry on the wall and in front of it is a shitty fucking ikea lamp and an empty <laughs> coke can and like these books that are about lacrosse that were apparently were really popular in the early 2000s so it's just like this this combination of of all this stuff and like i just think the entry scene into the movie or into saltburn when felix is giving you the tour is just such a fucking brilliant scene because there's all this stuff, all this crazy, incredible stuff. All you want to do is see the house, but Oliver's eyes are only on Felix and you're Mm -hmm. just following Felix around. And then also at the same time, Felix does not give a shit about any of the fancy ass shit in his house. Like that's not interesting to him Mm because that's just, Every day Old to him. Dad's Teddy is same exact level as King Spunk on this bed. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Dad's Teddy really quickly. So one of the inspirations for this movie is Brideshead Revisited. Brideshead Revisited. It's like a very similar story where like a boy comes to an old fancy manor house with this other boy and there's it's gay subtext, blah, blah, blah. I haven't read the book is what I'm trying to tell you. But I started mm-hmm. reading it today. And the very beginning of the first chapter, the guy Sebastian is taking um, the the other guy to the house for the first time, and they're like, they're like, oh, like, bring my teddy or whatever. And I was like, that's weird. And so I talked to Adam about it, who's read the whole book now, and I think that that teddy bear is a reference to Sebastian's teddy, which makes me think. Like, are they alluding that James Catan, Sir James the father, maybe had his own little gay tryst similarly back in the well, day? Well, isn't Brideshead revisited by... Um, Evelyn Waugh or something. Yeah, and they say in the movie, oh, her novels are based on my family. Oh, yes. th- is that what they say? Oh, yeah. cool, 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 cool. I didn't, I didn't, um, I always couldn't hear what they're saying during that part of the british accents sometimes i just mm-hmm. like well it's lost to time <laughs> and they talk very quickly <laughs> it's lost to time and i okay, hate before we get too far i did have to turn certain subtitles off at one point though because there was music playing during the grave scene and i was like it's covering him up and i know yes, i know I have to yes, yeah, for that. um anyway um okay but when he first gets there this is a question about your first experience watching the film yeah. although you've touched on it a little bit for adam um again i knew 95 percent of what i was getting in for um but when he has that interaction with duncan in the beginning with the suitcase you didn't tell us blah 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 you're interacting with the staff kind of in a way that's like not quite 
appropriate because you don't have the experience of knowing how to do this. You're just coming mm. at it from like the outsider's perspective and also the the working class perspective of like these people are kind of more my peers in many ways than the family is. Um, I kept being like, what scene does this remind me of? And it was that scene. I never finished the invitation, um, but it was the scene from the invitation where she first shows up at the mansion and it's like she accidentally a glass gets broken or whatever and she's like trying to take responsibility for it so that like the maid doesn't get in trouble blah oh, blah that blah she gets in trouble because yeah. she's trying to do the work i remember that and also like the the connection my brain made between this movie and that movie is another like interloper coming into the Bang- english countryside manor as an outsider and not really knowing what the deal is did those parallels of those kinds of stories did that set you up to really be more sympathetic to Oliver like what was your experience watching it for the first time not knowing that he is like a little con man because I was like he's a con man oh for me I just felt like he was like at first he just seems to me like this like love sick puppy dog you know what I mean where he's just like just basking in the afterglow of being around Felix like Felix is the sun and he's like just a star like you know going okay. around him you know what I mean and so I, I you know I was annoyed for Oliver at that moment because I'm like Felix you fucking shit communicator like you gotta tell people the rules otherwise of course he's gonna break them all because the rules are fancy and weird and how would he know and that's another one of those disconnect moments where he's like oh like he'll know what to do because he like and also like time... Felix yeah doesn't have to uphold the rules because he's the family and so he doesn't have to live by them Duncan is staff and so he's like these are the rules and if you don't follow the rules you get fired there's so much turnover for, for, for the footmen um yeah. and so like there's that element of like who has to follow the rules and who doesn't also but I was yeah. just thinking about like that there's so many stories where it's like the person who comes in is the vulnerable one, which like we do see in this movie in some ways. But I was wondering if that like narrative setup, it, if it's so familiar from so many other stories like that, or if like you like you guys, okay, one of the people at the bar who's telling me about the fairy books was like, this movie is just the talented Mr. Ripley and that movie did it better. And that's why I asked you guys if you had seen it, like, the various framework I'm wondering how that played into what your expectations were I guess so that was my spoiler for this movie um was the talented Mm. the the the, um comparison to talented Mr. Ripley but I am lucky and unlucky in many ways because the way I saw talented Mr. Ripley was this I came home Adam was watching the talented Mr. Ripley (laughs) He was an hour into it. It's a really long movie, though. So, like, I missed, like, a great deal of the setup. But I got there just before shit went fucking nuts. And then I saw the rest of the movie after that. So, it spoiled to me um, that, spoiler alert, Jacob Elordi would die. Um, And I figured that. But I just tried to, like, not have it in my mind and just, like, go for the ride. Because... okay. I just wasn't sure exactly what it was. How things would play out. I was just trying not to think about it, to be honest. Okay. Okay. I was trying not to think about it and trying not to guess too much. And I was supplemented, as we said at the time. So, which is a good way to zone in. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and I also, you know, I said this before, I love the pining. So I was just really enamored the with He's so the pining. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to ride this out until it hits the fan. But like, I, you know, it's easy to feel like Oliver feels when you look at Jacob Elordi because Jacob Elordi is the son. baby girl. Yeah. yeah. Um, Here's the thing. I was so vibing to this movie mm-hmm. that I didn't think Mm. Of literally anything else yeah, but this movie. On my face. 
Yeah, yeah, maybe that's a Chelsea trait because you guys know that whenever I'm watching things, I'm always like, oh, and this reminds me of this other movie and this reminds me of this other movie. And so often my notes are just like, here are five other movies that I think have similar things going on. That's why I stopped taking notes, honestly, for the pod. I stopped taking notes because it was taking me just, out of all of the movies. Like it was like I was thinking too much about it. And like the first time I watch it, I want to just like. Yeah, and you know experience. I don't always get yeah. the opportunity to watch it twice because of my planning. Um, but like I watch it and then I like just experience it, and then that's why I do all the research like right after. So like they'll yeah. bring up parts in the movie that will jig it, jig it. Okay, in my I, mind, that with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and like that, and that's how it works for me. Because otherwise, like my brain will just, you know, run off on its own anyway. I really have to, like, focus up or I'm gone. Mm-hmm. Speaking, uh, going back with this and the Akatar book. Um, <laughs> no, literally, like, this is... I know. <laughs> go, go. I want to so, hear it. Um, when I read, when I watch movies, like, I mm-hmm. just, like, read to read, and it's, like, this great plot, and my brain is not, like connecting a lot of stuff like I'm literally like just there for the vibes you know Mm -hmm. but with the Akatar books like it's so deep and so like connected with Uh 800 million other things that like afterwards I get to go back and do research and be like oh my god like I did not pick this up and then when I watch it again I am like fascinated by like all of this stuff like we get totally. it's like watching hereditary for a second time that's exactly what i was just yes. thinking that was exactly what <laughs> but, i was just but thinking it's also you know like you like you watch tiktoks you listen to podcasts you do all this stuff and you get people where they're like this is a classic like greek mythology retelling where uh you know oliver's mm-hmm. the minotaur felix is very compared much to like icarus where he flew too close to the sun he's got his wings he's in the wings Barry as as you know right now you're in your little antlers Mm -hmm. like my brain did not pick any of that up I was like Midsummer's Night Dream I love this for a while I thought um Felix was supposed to be Claire Danes in Romeo and Juliet with his little uh, I thought about that too yeah that was no I I watched a whole video on on that too that that's also a reading of it <laughs> and I was it's just like that. Oh my god! Once we get I to the like, party, oh, I've so got a lot baby to say. girl. But like, there are a lot of great visual metaphors going on here, and like some of them are things on IMDb trivia that I was mad to see on IMDb trivia, so that I couldn't be the one who discovered it for everyone. <laughs> but like when they're at breakfast and they're talking about doppelgangers, yes, this is my favorite part. Yeah, you like see probably Jacob Elordi in the background, like in that scene. And then it like cuts to him and you see Felix wearing the same color shirt. Like you can't see who that man is exactly, but it's stuff like that like sprinkled throughout regularly. Okay, well let's talk about that really quickly because I don't want that to go unsaid. Because this is one of those little moments that she put in the movie where like she's spoiling the movie for you, but like she's banking on the fact that you're not going to notice it. And it's just like fodder for you to watch it the second time and feel cool. You know what I mean? But like they're talking about a British poet named Percy Shelley. I tried to say the middle Percy name. Percy Biss Shelley, Biss, maybe. Uh, yeah, B Y S S H E. Oh. Percy Shelley, Mary Shelley's uh, husband. Oh, cool. Who Mary Shelley I think wrote so, yeah. Inside. Yeah, he was a poet. And then they mentioned but, Byron later, and those guys were yeah. besties. So. Yeah, yeah. It all it's all connected. But like they're talking about that and how he's they had seen a doppelganger of Percy and then he died shortly afterwards drowning in the sea and so Mm. and Felix is shaken to his core by this he's like don't fucking tell me about that that's so creepy to me and it like zooms in on him I don't know exactly the order of operations here but then it shows the window and it shows it's Jake Velorde it shows fucking Felix walking by outside And I saw that when I watched it, not the first time, I saw it when I watched it with Adam, and I was super excited about it, and I was like, what does it mean? And I meant to look it up, and then I forgot, and then I figured it out the third time before I looked it up. Uh, But yeah, it is an omen for his death. I was just like, ha ha, doppelgangers, and there's his doppelganger go. But that's really interesting that there's more to it than that, if you're also paying attention to the aspect of the doppelganger context yeah well that's i've been rewatching uh vampire diaries so doppelgangers (laughs) oh my fucking god 
I don't even. Shit, I, Emerald Fennel said this is a vampire movie. It is. It is. For IMDb trivia, which it is other than just that scene. Um, but also, like, I remember when we did Bram Stoker's Dracula, and we were talking about how vampire movies are often like metaphorical for class consciousness and like the wealthy feeding on the poor. And so to call this a vampire movie is also very interesting in that sense too. No, totally. Yeah, no, it's that, that part was so interesting. You know, I, I don't know. I just love that. I just love that. Like she put these things in to make it more fun to watch it again, because like we're like, well, Oh, this is what I was trying to say. Sorry. I lost it for a second. Um, There's so much going on visually in this movie. Like it's a feast for the fucking eyes. Just besides the fact that you have Jacob Elordi in it. There's more like the set dressing. There's everything like these there's fancy busts in the house like like uh marble ones and they're wearing funky hats on it and apparently that's part of the reason why emerald chose this house because she was like that's so fucking irreverent that's like a billion dollar <laughs> bust and it's got fancy hats on top like everything visually there's so many things going on but at the same time these bitches are running their mouth all the day long and so it's hard to like see everything and hear everything at the same time so like the doppelganger moment you're like oh you're thinking oh that's weird so you're not listening to them talking about how the poet died after his doppelganger was seen um and that's on purpose because she's trying to like give you something but not enough for you to figure it out and spoil her own movie which is smart not she's inceptioning you movie. that later you're gonna be like oh my god mm -hmm. Also, I just want to say really quickly, in all of these things that I read, all she was saying, Emerald was saying, well, there are interviews, there are YouTube videos. Um, she was like, gothic romance, gothic romance, gothic romance. No wonder I love this so much. It's mm -hmm. fucking Crimson Peak, baby. <laughs> yep. <laughs> just in 2006. So there we go. Um, but I think also his introduction to the family, Ollie's introduction to the family, is so interesting when we meet Rose Rosamund Pike's character Elspeth. Um, she is so oh Elspeth. That's how you spell it. E L S P E E C H. Never would have guessed that. Um, she is horrifying. I love her. That like I love how Felix is like everything. She is hates chill. gross things. Also, you have to shave your face. I can't you wear my eyebrow stud. Yeah, mm -hmm. she is she horrified by because ugliness they, because they say Which that. So and I'm literally like, does he have stubble right now? He looks pretty clean shaven to me, but he's got to be baby smooth, like baby fucking smooth. Another thing that's super interesting too, um, in that in that same moment, in that same breath, uh, Felix is like, Oh yeah, she doesn't even let me keep my stud in, um, the eyebrow piercing. And so he doesn't have it for all the time that he was in Saltburn. But behind the scenes fact, Emerald Fennel, my girl for life, fought tooth and nail to have Jacob Elordi have the eyebrow piercing because she was like, That was the hottest thing you could possibly have in two thousand six. By the way, Emerald Fennel went to Oxford in 2006, just so. Yeah, so she context. knows. context, so she knows. And the producers were like, no, you cannot mar that man's beautiful face. And so they came to a compromise where the first half of the movie, he could have the eyebrow piercing and the second half, he couldn't have it. And so that's why they wrote that into the movie. They fall super funny. I... But it's great dialogue, too. Yeah, it adds to it. I have a lot of piercings and I love piercings, but the eyebrow piercing to me is like such an ick. Oh, you know I, what I, mean? like, I don't think it looks good on him, but I do remember in the early aughts, I would always go like this to my mom and be like, what if I pierced my eyebrow? So clearly it was in my brain all the time. No, it, it was a big thing. And I'm weirdly attracted to him with an eyebrow piercing, but it's such an ick. It's like one of those. It's like, the weirdly attracted for you. Yeah. yeah. For me, like. Ugh. I don't know. But it's just like I'll... for Monica, it's regular attracted. Oh yeah, yeah I love it. <laughs> I just like it's giving, it's giving Monica, pop punk realness. Um, you know what I mean? That's so... what snake bites were for, Monica. Oh, I hate snake bites. Sorry, that's that's different. I like I... that. But if Jacob had them, they'd be weirdly attractive. To her. <laughs> no, yes, I don't see? think so. They would trust me. That's how I felt. With I mean, he'd still be, he wouldn't be not hot, but I'd be like. He's going to scar. You know, that's what I always think with those and the cheek ones, the yeah, dimple these. ones. I was just like, freak I'm me not out a and lip. they get cut to your teeth. I'm not a lip piercing. Uh, when I was in ninth grade, I had a 
uh, a guy who was a senior who was in my science class who asked me to prom and my dad was like no his chin is pierced and I was like he's really nice he's very dumb but he's a very nice boy and I regret not going to prom all the time mm, Scarlett Johansson had her eyebrow pierced <laughs> I'm googling it Famous Kyle people Gallner with eyebrow I think piercings. has a lip piercing in Jennifer's body mm-hmm. and he looks cute Oh, Fergie's was bad. I still have. Just, I had my, Fergie's was iconic. Yeah. It, yes, but it was also. I bad. had my, <laughs> I had my tongue pierced, and you can still see the like. Hole, That's what I was thinking like the, about his eyebrow. I was like, is it like going to close? Is there going to be a in, visible hole? Here's you the will, thing. Um, you can put like a little Did retainer in that's clear. Yeah, it's a clear mm. one. and it'll keep it open. Here's the thing, I've seen people with keloids. And you can get a keloid on your eyebrow. There's a TikTok mm-hmm. person I really like, and she got a keloid on her eyebrow. And so she had to take it out, and it looked fucking terrible. I mean, she's still fucking gorgeous, so it's fine. But, like, it looks painful and awful, so those types of pier- those types of piercings kind of scare me. But hot. When it's healed, right? Hot. Anyway, moving on. Back to the movie. Rosamund Pike, Elsbeth. Um... Oh, that sucks. Uh, Elspeth is so fucking terrifying in this movie. Like, the, just the uncomfortable nature that the fact that they know Oliver's in the house and they are talking mad fucking shit about him. Not shit, right? but, like... They improvise that about... conversation, also. Oh, I love actresses. that. Yeah. Oh, my God. And There's a lot of just... improvising on this movie, apparently. It was... Cr- I love yes. that. Yeah. But they're... <laughs> it's crazy that they're just, like, reading him for filth, you know, saying all this stuff about him, and he walks in on it. Um... I also do love that little moment when he still has the little piece of um, toilet <laughs> paper on his face and Jacob's like, get it off your face. But like, Elspeth is so intense. And then I read this whole thing about how like, she like forces this this level of like fake closeness with you right away so you feel like you can tell her anything, but she's also like forcing you to tell her anything. Like she mm-hmm. comes up right into his face. She's like, you're gorgeous, you're beautiful holds his hands, squeezes his hands so tight, sits him down, like kicks Pamela out so she can ha- he can have all of her attention, immediately mm-hmm. talks shit about Pamela and was like, it's about you now, actually. You're the one. And like, just as like, you can tell me anything. And like, poor Ollie, my God, like we know he's got a lot of things going on. But like when he gets back to his room and he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Talk about yeah. intense. It was so interesting in that moment seeing Pamela's dismissal and the way that British um, politeness allows for so much of this where it's just like, oh, do you mind doing this? And like, how, first of all, how can you say no? Because you're a guest in their home. And so like their quote unquote generosity dictates that you can't really say no to things because you're in debt to them in so many ways. And even if you're kind of protesting, even if you, like, don't know where you're going, don't know who Annie is, who you're supposed to find, like, you have questions, you're not allowed to ask follow-ups. It's like, you've been dismissed, actually. Off you pop. Like, go. Get the fuck out. Like, Mm -hmm. you're under whatever Elspeth says goes. Yeah. But, yeah, she clearly is, like, the keeper of the secrets in the family in many ways. And the way that she dispenses them is so interesting but it's interesting that the the fact that that is like the instant connection for her and Oliver is really interesting because like one of the things that is in my notes which I just wrote down some thoughts afterwards um is like like I've mentioned there's this like really beautiful golden light on Jacob Elordi in the beginning and so many points throughout the film and it like I don't know. I wasn't really keeping track exactly, but it never touches Oliver. He's always kind of coldly lit, even in the sun, until that moment where he's outside talking to Elspeth about Venetia, and it's like finally the golden light touches him. It's like that's his moment in, and it's through her, and it's through that connection, and like that's you know later on as well. So that's the ultimate in for him. Yeah, Yeah. it's like that is the moment where like. Well, he, he had really to train. is in, in some ways. He had to train he, up yes, first he's to a quick know study, what he's to be. Study. He mm-hmm. had to study because you see him fumble so much at the beginning. He's struggling so much. And then he's 
writing down notes about everything that Jacob Elordi does, everything that Felix is. And so he starts to to become him. You know what I mean? It's it's exciting before you know what's going to happen to see him finally get his bearings. You know, it's so funny. Like he's having all these struggles. I don't know exactly when the bathtub scene happens. I think it's after the fun time non uh, montage, right? The fun time montage is first, right? Um, but I think the fun time montage is like a turn, a turning point. And by fun time montage, what do I mean? I mean, when he finally reveals his dick to everyone and is therefore They're accepted la- into in the, the field. Group. They're like, well, he's got a big dick, so big good for him. <laughs> yeah. And that's when they play Time to Pretend. Oh, my God. I could hear it coming because it has all those weird, like, rum, 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 rum <laughs> sounds in the beginning. And I was like, oh, my God, I have something this rumble. I feel it in my I soul. I know this rumble. That was such a good fucking, like, opulence montage. Like, them just, like, oh, my God, this is state, the grounds. You get finally get, like, a better grasp of the grounds and how there's so many different places. Like, where the fuck is that field? Then there's also all the different pools. There's like 15 different pools. Oh my God. Um was but this it, is that what... yeah, the go. pool where he's like lounging and he's like man, he's like spread with the Harry Potter book. Oof. Art. Art. Art by the pool. Art by the pool. Oh God. It's so beautiful. But, but um, yeah, I it... mean it's interesting because the the friend that he ditches who's terrible at school is like you literally changed the way that you're dressing like you're wearing clothes like them now instead of clothes like me and then he gets to Saltburn and Felix is like oh I pulled this jacket for you by the way it's one of my old ones oh you don't have cufflinks we'll figure it out like he's literally wearing Felix's clothes sometimes at this point yeah no seriously which is just what besties do okay it's just what it's just sexy what besties. homoerotic besties do they just wear their much larger besties clothes from the fourth grade um <laughs> and <laughs> it worked out it worked out really great but before we get too far away from that moment i just want to talk about the this is i'm taking my pigeon pin out of time to pretend um <laughs> The lyrics of that that movie or of that movie, God fuck. Uh, the lyrics of that <laughs> song are like all about like kind of being a frivolous, Protesting. rich <laughs> youth kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um. But well, yeah. But it's like <laughs> this is what the chorus is. Hold on. Spoken word poetry. This is our decision to live fast and die young. We've got the vision. Now let's have some fun. Hold on. Then there's the other part. Love must be forgotten. Life can always start up anew. The mo- oh, sorry. Where is it? There's the part. It's about like them like uh, find some models for wives, move to Paris, shoot heroin, and fuck with the stars. So it's them about like not caring about anything, just like you know fucking around, ha- sex, like all of that kind of thing. Sex, drugs, so- rock and roll. Exactly. But then, I mean, it's not it's not that deep. But I thought it was kind of deep. The lyrics at the end of um. Uh, at the end are we'll choke on our vomit and that will be the end we were fated to pretend that is the last bit of the song so that's another little um predictive foreshadowing moment in the movie and i was like and a fun night emerald guitar Ooh. faded mates Ooh, oh my fucking god <laughs> <laughs> this is like the time that you guys kept up going bringing up taylor swift <laughs> and i was like it's not about taylor swift <laughs> all about taylor swift i'm sorry monica you know i brought her up we brought her up last you, time yeah. You know? yeah that one was on you well sydney said it first but i was planning you, on you bringing teed her it up. up yeah oh yeah yeah i teed her up for it <laughs> um but yeah i mean i just from from there it just gets so much sexier and it's just so intense like I, I guess I can understand if I wasn't myself at all and was a completely different person why I might be um grossed out by the sex scenes that came but like thank god I'm not that fuck I was this is like the horniest the movie has made me can I be so vulnerable this is the horniest the movie has made me in a long time <laughs> <laughs> the bathtub scene was this is a safe space Monica really the most incredible thing I've ever seen <laughs> I mean like yeah it's I just, agree the most intense like i just got chills like yeah not straightforward but like most like visceral 
depiction it was of sexual intimate. longing, longing that I have hole. seen. He's giving the bathtub a rim job. Like, it was, oh, it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, And I thought it was, like, perfect in the way that it was so extreme, you know? That, like, that's how extreme Oliver is feeling in this moment. How much yeah. he wants to crawl inside of Felix's skin. Like, crawl inside this custom-made bathtub big enough to comfortably fit a six-foot-five man. Yes. Like, oh, my God. Just, again, the voyeur thing. Him watching him masturbate that the voyeur Mm -hmm. thing comes back again Um, which again like do you think he left the door open on purpose do you think he just assumed the door was closed was it one of those things where it's like I'm unbothered by who might be looking because I'm beautiful and of course people are looking or what I mean we all do that don't we open I I I wanted to ask you guys about this too because there's this there's a part like right after he meets the family for the first time and they're in the room together and their faces are like a hair's breadth away from each other and they're talking about like his suitcase unpacking and they're like i hope you didn't bring anything illicit blah 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 Mm, blah mm -hmm. like and jacob or felix is right there in his face and he can you can see that oliver is just like Ooh, you know, quaking in his boots, you know, and Felix fucking knows. He knows the power him, that he has over all of these people who are so enamored with him. And he's used he's to Regina George every and he wants to be one. desired and he mm-hmm. needs to feed off of that. Okay. He's used to that desire and he likes to play with that desire. And he's a little bit of a fucking tease. And I'm sure he actually, I, I think there was real chemistry there too. You know what I mean? They didn't go go into it but like you know how can ollie hold his attention long enough because there's that moment he leaves the door open you know i don't know i think that was like a a test or or something him being alluring but later on in the movie in this montage where oliver seems really overwhelmed and like being surpassed by the craziness of of saltburn where jacob alordi is jerking it in the bathtub again and the door is locked and closed. And so Jacob, uh, like Felix is still giving Ollie attention and still being nice to him because he's a nice guy. But I think that like that was supposed to symbolize that like he's you're getting in and over you're out. his new toy. He's getting over his new toy and he's maybe was considering it before. But then by that point, it's late in the summer. He's kind of over it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Mean that makes sense things. to me. And there's also, I mean, there's a fairly clear parallel now that I'm thinking about it of like Felix jerking off in the bathtub with the door open versus Venetia draping herself in a chair under his window later on. Like, I'm not explicitly calling your attention, but I am presenting myself in many ways. And then you you can come to to me. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They play the same game. They play the same game. Um, And it's one is more subtle. Yes. One is more, one is much more subtle. And then Um, it's also like who else is also looking rather than being seen. Farley is the one peeping through the window. He's a looker. He's not being seen. Maybe this would be because we're about to get to the vampire scene. Maybe this would be a good time to talk about what you guys are talking about with the um, incest stuff, because I didn't necessarily feel it between Venetia and um, Felix. And I'd love to hear what you guys picked up on there. But I did feel it a little bit with Farley and Felix. I think that he also, besides being just trepidatious and like sensing something strange on Oliver, I think he was very... um, uh defense not defensive is not the right word but protective pro- thank you protective in a way that i don't know it well, seemed a little bit different. i think i think farley sees them a little bit like even though he is there like felix is his meal ticket a little bit know what i mean so he is gonna be more protective of outsiders because like 
he is an outsider. He so doesn't want to like, be replaced as part yes, of it. I'm yeah. the only outsider that is allowed in yeah. this circle. So he's Even though- gonna be very protective. I belong he here, says, but I don't have rights to be here. And so I need to be defensive about my position. Even though when he, like, at the Midsummer Night's Dream party, when he fucking comes for Ollie's life, he's like, I will always come back here because this is where I belong. He still has that fear because he knows yeah, he these has people. To come and he's back. seen yeah. them take it away before. So that makes he sense. He knows yeah, he me. can be kicked out. He knows but, he'll come back, but he knows he can be kicked out at any moment. Yeah. And the incest stuff a little bit one, like, uh, when they're doing karaoke, we see Venetia, like, sitting oh, on Oh, yeah, she's Felix's sitting on his lap. lap. And I also thought to myself, very... I would not, it's platonic when I sit on people's laps, but I would not sit on my brother's lap. You would not sit on your brother's lap in the way that she is sitting and the way that draped. he's, like, yeah touching her as well like she's draped over him well, and he is like i don't know what brothers her. and sisters do so i was and like it's oh, also maybe like... they just sit on each other's laps <laughs> here's like brothers and sisters can sit on each other's laps easy peasy but it's the way yeah. that they're doing and then after the vampire scene um venetia and ollie have like a conversation at dinner and she's like Felix doesn't like to share. He's like, oh, yeah, like, if you try and, like, hook up with me, Felix doesn't like to share his toys even after he's done playing with them. And that's, like, why Farley reports on him to Felix. I think it's kind of like, um, it's like we're always talking about with the homoerotic fucking your besties man kind of thing. It's It's kind of like, do they actually want to fuck each other? That's a different question, but is there this aspect of, like, I want your attention more than anyone else, I want to be your favorite more than anyone else, I want what you have, we're so linked that we're kind of part of each other, I, like, if I take from you, that means that I'm worthy of this thing, um, there, it's just, like, this really interlocked way that's, like, incestuous in vibes, even if they are not actually having, like, a romantic experience. They do have matching hand tattoos, though. It's kind of like in Crimson Peak, where it's, like, this person is a part of me who is not separate from me it's jamie and cersei do the same thing in game of thrones where it's like to me this is not just my twin this is an extension of myself okay yeah i mean i i I can see where you guys where you guys are coming from for sure i just don't didn't read as incestuous to me i think they're both just like innately sexual people and like you know, Venetia is described as slinking around the house and laying herself Being on the s- naked yeah, and displaying herself, herself out. And over, I think that yeah. she, they just have a level of like comfortableness with each other that, like, you know, I can see how it can be read that way, but it didn't seem like I that don't think they're me. sneaking off to kiss or anything. Yeah, I just yeah, think yeah, the yeah. vibes are intense and focused on each other and it's like a codependence almost more than it is like a literal incest yeah i i, I don't think they're twins actually i think venetia's young i don't think they are twins yeah, i was just saying yeah. for for jamie and cersei those oh, okay, are twins. Okay. also i know this takes place in 2006 but i just want to bring up that skins started in 2007 mm. and so they would have been watching like, that if this movie came out just one year later year later but like they said they're watching the ring but like their I whole love that. <laughs> attitude and stuff does give off very like skins effie vibe. and tony right those uh-huh. were the siblings yes. in that i never yes. watched it but enough oh, of my you friends should. were so i tried because my friend who loved degrassi also loved skins and i was like maybe but i it wasn't for me i don't think um but yeah i, I have it. enough also tumblr it. osmosis exposure to like yes. know a lot of what the deal is I yeah, think it gives big Effie Tony vibes. I a think bit. the other thing that I read into this is that like the the whole thing is that they're so comfortable in their domain, which is Saltburn. Mm-hmm. So it just read as like pure comfort around the people that they're around. Like they're just comfortable with each other, and it's not like 
it's just relaxed i don't know there's also like a freedom of sexuality for them for sure where it's like i'm fucking this person and it doesn't necessarily mean anything to me and so like maybe they have like fucked some of the same people they've shared some of the same toys before they're taking each other's toys and like is it in some ways a stand-in maybe um is it like is that kind of the vibe sometimes um but also i think it's like again he mentions very offhandedly in the house to her oh i accidentally fingered my cousin here so like there are lines that are getting blurred because we never find out what he meant by that exactly like oh were you all hanging out naked and your finger slipped somewhere like did you not know it was your cousin at the time i don't really know what you mean by you accidentally fingered your cousin i don't know where the accident part of it came in but it uh, opens the door for like lines being crossed that much because my dad was like i had a huge crush on my cousin and blah 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 blah. so i think when you're little people don't understand like those things you're not fingering people when you're little i don't know any of my dad's side of the family really (laughs) like I like he was never close with like my dad's dad's side of the family and so I'm always so scared that one day I'm gonna like accidentally run into a cousin that I didn't know was a cousin because I've never met them a day in my life you know what I mean I just watched something where somebody said they hooked up with their cousin at a family reunion because they were the two teenagers there and they were bored and i don't remember what that was actually but but there's the incestuousness of fucking like british aristocracy in general and also like i didn't even know this person was my cousin yeah exactly because it's so fucking inbred sorry British people, not everyone. <laughs> but like, there is a history to get to the of Harry that Potter with of it royals. all. I've seen the Black Family Tree. Yeah, exactly. So I think it was just like a joke to that. When you got to keep anyway. the bloodlines pure, everybody's related to everybody. The Queen and Queen Elizabeth and her husband were, I cousins. think, literally first cousins, but they might have been second cousins. I don't know. I think they were third cousins. Oh, were they? Something like that, but they were definitely cousins. <laughs> For sure cousins. For sure cousins of some kind. But also yeah. you get the Spanish, like the Habsburgs, who ruled Spain, and they were like so inbred. Bees. Wasn't that the well, thing with the, the Russians Habsburg- also where that's why they Habsburg all were chin. hemophiliacs? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like thing. but you get the Habsburg jaw, like one of them had like a bladder like that was black and this big, and people were like, How are you alive? Also you, get, baby. also, you get the blue people of Kentucky. Oh, my God. I'll uh, Google that later. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Put a, put I'm going to link change, in the resources. I, I'm, right. changing, <laughs> I'm changing the subject to the vampire scene now <laughs> instead of inbreeding. <laughs> <laughs> um, another very incredible erotic moment. And let's just say right now that um, Oliver may have many flaws, but that ain't one of them. <laughs> <laughs> we love a man who's not afraid um but we don't love a that period he is don't so stop nothing but a sentence time. okay yeah that's what Oliver they say is like there's I don't there is no wrong time of the month baby just a beautiful scene and also it's just so interesting how oliver's so deeply playing the game at this point because this comes right on the tails on of his scene with um with Elspeth, Elspeth where he's touched by the golden light for the where first he's touched time. by the golden light and she brings up how she was lesbian for a period but it was which is so funny too wet for her men are I so lo- lovely men are so much dry. dry that was so funny and so iconic but i thought that that was such an interesting moment too because oliver is so so adept now you know he's flirting with her she's into it and also he's giving secrets about venetia that he can use yeah but also the whole conversation about pamela and how pamela had just been kicked out and he goes jumps through all these hoops makes shit up basically to ease elspeth's guilt to like you know ingratiate himself with elspeth even more it's a brilliantly played game i mean i'm the person who makes you feel better yeah at this point, you can. I feel like it's pretty easy to see that there's something going on. You're like so this, fucking beautiful. It must have been so hard for Venetia to have you as a mother. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was like, what's Ollie? I was like, whoa. It was Ollie. bold. It was and it bold. Paid off. And then he stuck his whole hand in Venetia. Uh, yeah. Venetia's 
bloody vagina. And that was awesome. I loved it. That scene was so As hot. As he should. It <laughs> was, was very great. hot. It was well. It was very interesting to me also that he was like, I am a vampire. And he was like, also you, I'm putting my fingers in your mouth too, to be clear. Like we are on the same level now. Yeah. It was fingers just so in the mouth. Gritty. Oh my God. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. And then the scene the next day the, when, when he's, he's in the, like, wait, when he's in the bath and he's in under oh, the water and his red the mouth. There's just so many amazing shots in this movie. That was beautiful. And her, wait, her blood in the bathtub is also going to parallel A foreshadowing? later. Ooh, oh, my fucking God. That's so creepy. And I, I just love, like, the intense chemistry between them the next morning before Felix shows up when he's, when like, he pushes the croissant pushing the over. food towards her and they're just looking at each other. Oh, my God. Um. But yeah, I mean, then you then you immediately see what it's like to be on Felix's bad side, and it fucking sucks. He's a he's a petty little bee when he's like, no, I didn't sleep well. No, nothing's wrong. Um, but may, 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 I just leave it. Um, I'm not Harry annoyed. Potter. Yeah, I'm not annoyed. He's such a little brat. <laughs> Love. I'd be pissed too, probably, if my friend fucked my sister and I yeah. wanted to fuck that friend. You know. <laughs> that seems pretty hard. Or maybe and I didn't want to fuck that friend, but I don't want anybody <laughs> else to fuck that friend. What if I change yeah. my mind down the line? Yeah. I, but That's I think that scene point. really adds to the like unfolding of of like what is going on um with Ollie and how you start to realize that something something is up. Um He's cause... trying all of his avenues. Oh, it's not going my well. Died. Sorry. That's okay. But it's like, oh, things aren't going great with Felix right now. Like, they're going okay, but I'm trying every aspect that I can. Like, I'm getting in with Elsbeth. I'm getting in with Venetia. Like, I am having animosity with Farley, but I'm going to double back to that leader, too, when I think I can have – when I have a way in and I think I know how to use it. Like, at the karaoke party with all of the Henrys, when they have that moment where their faces are so close together on the couch, and he's like, fuck Chuck or whatever, Mary, um, maybe I'd fuck King Richard because he's insecure, so you know he'd work for it. And Oliver's like, why don't you just fuck me? It's like, okay. Ooh. All sure. right. I loved that. <laughs> Ooh. The karaoke part of that was brutal, too, where it's like, it's oh, your song, God. bitch. And then he was like, actually, bitch, it's your song, your song. too. <laughs> and then Farley gets on the mic and he has a voice of an angel. <laughs> yeah, Farley Slade. <laughs> He's so he got a gorgeous voice. But, um, I, like, but, I know the hand that feeds me. Mm-hmm. Well, it's just it's so I just think that Emerald Farley Fennel knows he's got to make himself useful, too. Yeah. But I think That's why he's given like, the gossip. He's like, oh, I saw them outside together. Well, yeah, he's like being like, look, I'm looking out for you. Like, I'm I'm looking out for you. Side. I'm reporting back to you. Yeah. Yeah. But I just think that Emerald does an incredible job of slowly unfurling how there's something up with Oliver. Because, like, you're starting to get these little things. They're like, oh, why does he have all this sexual prowess now? Why is he, like manipulating Elspeth and he's manipulating Venetia and then you see and he's lying to Felix he let yeah he's lying to Felix now he's like oh he's he's handling it so well when Farley's insulting him and embarrassing him in front of everyone but no then you see his rage when he wraps his hand and punches the glass you know of the mirror so you're starting to see all these things and then you see him take control of Farley. He goes to his room, mounts him, and is like, behave as I wank you off right now. Like, that was also hard. What a great scene. The way he makes him say it, he's like, are you going to behave now? No. Are you going to behave now? No. What are you going to do? I'm going to behave. Like, not just say yes. You say the fucking words. Here's the thing. Charge in that moment. Oliver became a brat tamer in that exact moment. Yes. And I was into it. Dude, and like, I don't know. I just love, I do think he's like an authentically bisexual character, despite all of the like, um, 
you know, ulterior motives. I do think that he has those desires. Um, he is peak chaos bisexual. Oh my god, I I loved it. Great. Like, I've never seen a more chaos bisexual on screen than I have. When he's Oliver like quick. Oh, he spits in his hand. Oh my god. Love spitting. Woo. Woo. Um, I was not sure because again I knew what I was getting into I thought in that scene I was scared that he had brought a chunk of the mirror with him though and that that was when the killing was gonna start like I really oh. was not sure exactly what those vibes were no um, none of none of it is but it was gone. a different it was a different scheme that was going on in that moment they're all crimes of like well we'll get there Pigeon pin and crimes of passion. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought that that scene was so incredible. But then also you're also the next morning when suddenly immediately Farley's getting kicked out. That's suspicious. Mm -hmm. He was just in his bed last night. Like, yeah, Ollie was just in his bed last night. That's a little strange. Um. But I also thought it another really like revealing part in twofold was the scene immediately after that when they're all all the kids are down by the the lake and they're discussing what Farley did and discussing like, oh, who's the most um not privileged, uh spoiled out of all of them, like, oh, Farley was so spoiled, blah, 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 blah. And how like the mom and dad come in and they're like, Oh, just don't bring him up. Don't worry, like, they won't ever bring it up. They don't ever talk about these things. When someone who is, like, Felix's brother, like, both of their brother is kicked out of the house, it's not going to be discussed in any way. They're not going to discuss anything ugly ever. ever. Other than when they're she maybe, doesn't like, like ugly oh, things. that husband. Why would they talk about that's it? That's so true. Exactly. That's so true. Exactly. That's why the husband has to quietly, discreetly ask people to leave out of her sight. Mm -hmm. yeah so i also loved i thought it was twofold because like what one they've just wiped the floor of farley he's gone and then they so callously it's been two three weeks since pamela was kicked out of the house maybe a month and they just so casually are like oh yeah Ugh, i wish i didn't have to go down to london why do you have to go to london oh pamela's funeral oh pamela died Oh, she'd do anything for attention. For attention? Hilarious. Yeah, so funny. Line. But also, it's just so terrible because they kicked her out because they were done with her, but she needed help so badly still that she either, there's two options. She, because she had issues with addiction. So either that's what killed her or her ex Russian mob boyfriend who was like, there's all that talk earlier when she's like, my dad always thought I'd end up at the bottom of the Thames. So, like, she also could have been a mob fucking hit, too, which I thought was funny. Oh, people kept falling out of windows around him. And something yeah. in IMDb trivia said, and I don't really know if that was just someone's observation or not, but someone on IMDb trivia was like, you can see that that's the moment that Barry Keoghan starts to think. Mm. Well, oh, yeah. People start maybe... just falling out of windows around people and nobody questions it. Accidents happen. I know. <laughs> Not for poor people. <laughs> well, I think maybe this is the time when that like that montage starts to occur where Barry is seemingly being left behind, you know, because like Farley's gone. You think he'd get closer with Felix, but he's obviously mm -hmm. not like the door is locked. He's like still they're still talking to each other, but he's just like there's that shot of him like at the table and everyone's talking. Oh yeah, and oh he I looks love kind of like his, mm -hmm. I love Lolly Adafope. I think is how you say her name. The woman that is sitting next to him when oh Manisha God. like turns away. That conversation she is brutal. Yeah, and she's so she's in so many things that are wonderful, but she's great and shrill particularly. Um, and I just, I loved that conversation. I loved how quickly it was like, hello, pay attention to me. And so he misses his moment with Venetia where he's like trying to win her back. And then she is also like, you're doing nothing for me. I gave it a shot and you're doing nothing for me. So she turns away and then he's again, just there alone. Like he's a little plaything for these people. He really, he really is. And oh man. And that's why it's extra sad 
when um w- when it's his birthday finally um and and before we get to the birthday thing i just want to shout out really quickly i love the guy who plays sir james Catan, the dad he's so funny <gasps> to me he is so fucking hilarious to me but there's a scene earlier when they first bring up having a birthday party for ollie and his i felt so seen when he was like <laughs> It should be fancy dress. Honey, I can <laughs> wear my suit, or my suit of armor. I mm-hmm. <laughs> so much. Big Monica coat. <laughs> and his wife is so like, okay, honey. Sure, honey. Like, you know what Big I mean? Big Adam coated. <laughs> um, one of my best friends loves this movie. And so I was reporting back to her a little bit before we started recording. But after I finished watching and I was like, oh, the dad, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, um, you mean Richard E. Grant put some respect on his name? And so I was like, what has he been in that she's like his defending his familiar. honor like this? Um, he was the vampire dad in A Little Vampire. And also he was in Spice World, just so you know. <gasps> yes. He was uh, their manager. Oh, icon. Icon. Yeah, he's, he's a great also Oscar nominated for that Can You Forgive Me movie with Melissa McCarthy. Um, he's a great actor. He was in Spice World and Spice he was World. in A Little Vampire. What did he's I say? He's also doing some little reels right now where he's running around and then he says something really positive at the end. Um, and I like That's that. That's great. He's like running <laughs> and he's like, it's a beautiful day or something. Like something more profound than that. I loved it. <laughs> um. But yeah, that that's why it's it's so cute when it actually finally is Ollie's birthday and Felix is finally giving him the time of day and he's like, We're gonna have a surprise. We're gonna go do this thing for your birthday, a surprise road trip. And Ollie's so jazzed, he's like a little cutie baby. He's like shaking his his shoulders around like a happy dog wagging his tail. Um but I would just like to put on the record. I've said many things about um, gifts to give me on my birthday and do's and don'ts. Um, most recently, I, I I don't know if I said this on the pod or just to everyone else. Never get me a pet. Um, never get me a pet for my birthday. I don't want that. But also never have me confront my family on my birthday. Oh God, no. How would that be good what a for horrible. anyone? Ever. Gift. His mom had just kept calling and she really sounded sober on the phone, Monica. And because you left your phone unattended, actually, I left my phone unattended in your house since I'm um, Oliver and you're Felix. Um, since I left my phone unattended in your house, it's technically your property. And so you were right to answer it and to make plans on my behalf and to communicate with my mother whose call I've, I've been dodging for weeks. Like, because feel it, I'm Felix and I'm the white savior. This is his white savior complex coming out so fucking hard. It's fucking crazy. He's like, I can fix everything. I've t- whisked him away from his sad little life. So he's had a beautiful fucking summer with me. It's amazing. And now I'm going to fix his family. Now I'm ready to return him to where he belongs. No, and I think that I wasn't so he can sure, go home. but I, I think, I think that is like, it's coming from like his sweet side or whatever, but it's also I'm not going to dump her on the street, like Pamela, but, yeah. but also he, he needs to go is pretty much done with him at this point. And so this is him summer's trying almost over. summer's almost last over. boy's summer. I think last he... summer's boy also only gets the one summer. I mean, you know you who else is he gonna kill off to um you know restart their friendship he already killed his dad um not actually but met like in his lie there's not anything else that like barry can do to fucking use the defibrillators to jumpstart this friendship it was already dying felix was already over it three months ago and it somehow stayed on so it's not surprising that you know, that's happened. And also, they never fucked. So why would Felix want to keep him around? Look at that cute little thing. He's just the, all that chemistry for what? I'm kidding. <laughs> but that that scene is just brutal. Barry is wait. Fuck, be, uh, Oliver's panic when he realizes where they are. Oh, my God. On the never fucked note, though, do you think... I'm so curious about the never even kissing or anything like that. Do you think he didn't feel like he could 
go to Felix the way that he felt like he could go to Venetia and to Farley? Like, is he, like, untouchable to him in that way? Did he feel like he needed to be invited as opposed to he could just go to them? Or Yeah. And I also think it was, like, the reverence or is the it obsession like, made it, like, as we beyond. do, like, it's a... I kind of feel like it's one of those things where it's... Okay, remember in um, Death Proof when they're in the car and they're talking about relationships and Rosario Dawson is like, as soon as I fuck him, I'm now just one of the girls that he's fucking. If I ever want to be his girlfriend, I can't fuck him. I think it's maybe yeah. kind of that a little bit, too. Nothing can happen between us because as soon as something happens between us, that's the end. Well, also because he is so madly, like, in love, infatuation, whatever you want to call it. It's beyond just normal, like, lust. It's, like, more obsessive than that. You know I what I mean? I desire you it's, carnally. It's like a crawl inside your skin thing, like I was saying earlier. He wants to be him and be with him and everything. He wants to I want to wear your skin up. like a suit. He, he wants, wants to, to wear his skin like a suit. Exactly. And so, like, I want to put your face on my face. also can't imagine jeopardizing that. You know what I mean? Like, that's why, like, he was like, oh, it's not okay to fuck Venetia. We aren't going to be fucking Venetia again. You know what I mean? Like, he wants to stay in his favor. He wants to stay in Felix's light. You know, he wants to stay in his orbit. And so, I can s swing it as Farley lied one time, but I'm not risking it again. No, totally. Um, but yeah, that that just whole scene is so devastating. Just like to see it all fucking fall apart and then unravel so then fast. Just in silence, the car ride, the whole car ride home. But the conversation there too, where it's like, it's not just that I lied to you; it's also that I'm lying to my parents about like, oh, I'm Everything. at school and I'm I I I didn't even tell you I have sisters and oh no, I talk about my sisters all the time. You must have not been paying attention. Like the gaslighting, the way he's putting up the illusion for whoever he needs to be for who he's talking to um but he can't hold two illusions at once so once these two very different versions of him are in the room it's difficult like one of the first things on imdb trivia for this movie is that um barry keoghan said that in his notes he felt as if he was playing five different characters. So he had Oliver one, Oliver two, Oliver three, Oliver four, and Oliver five. And he's like writing down the different slightly characteristics and movements of each of them so that he can be like who, which Oliver he needs to be in each uh, scene. And you can't be both actor. at once successfully for no. the, for your audience of real people in the room with you. Um, and so just to see that moment, it's not just falling apart with Felix. It's also that Felix discovers that he will lie to anyone about anything. Here's the thing. So. Ollie is so like white girl from the suburbs coded who grew up like upper middle class. You know? I was bored and I yeah. didn't have the life that I wanted and I think I deserved. Yeah. So well, I'll just like make stuff up for fun. Well, yeah, there's that, but there's also just, like, this thirst for more, which is mm -hmm. something that, like, I don't know, I've read some some articles about, like, just that being the desire of today, you know what I mean? Like, fa Ollie falls into the trap that we all fall into when we, like, an Emerald Fennel, I was one of the videos, she said something very similar to this, but I can't quote it. It's just, like, we fall into this trap of, like, becoming enamored with things that we see online that are not real and not attainable to mm -hmm. us you know what i mean so like we see these the people gen z trap of like the old money aesthetic the exactly. crab wife thing that's happening right now you you the, the desire that absolutely paying these creators to push the there's, government <laughs> yeah there's always something like more that you can have there's always something better there's always something brighter there's always something shinier grass and is always greener found, on the other side exactly he found that and he desires it on a carnal physical spiritual psychological level like he has seen it he's experienced it and what farley says later on in the movie is true like he needs for it to be his now. You know what I mean? And what won't he do 
to make it his own. And it's like, it doesn't matter that he had a fucking really nice life. Like, he didn't feel like he that. He deserved this life specifically. He deserved, yeah, he has this, like, you Aren't know, I just as related as you are? Yeah. Look good for him with his self esteem being where it is that he's like, I deserve it all. I deserve the moon. That's confidence, baby. That's confidence, baby. Or um, good manifestation. Yeah, seriously. So it's just like about like obsession with that perfect, unattainable life of a king, of a prince. You know what I mean? Um, everybody wants to be a princess, and Barry's going to be one. Nothing will stop Barry him. Barry is one. Sorry, Ollie. Oliver is a little princess. Um, but yeah, just that that confrontation when they get back where Oliver's like, we'll be friends, right? We'll still be friends, right? No, bitch. We're going to no. laugh about this. No. We're going to laugh about this. You can't come back from that. That's fucking scary. And and Jacob Elordi, I'll give him this. He, he does do such a good job of being like, low key disgust high key disgusted but low key terrified in that moment you know as he mm -hmm. should be that's an insane web of lives like you've been living with this person for months and everything like the detail like rewatching it listening to the detail that Barry goes into the first Sorry, time Ollie I goes felt into. the inside of my mother's throat I was eight years old yeah just like that's disgusting that's sick that he made that up that's really fucking sick so but yeah, yeah that... and i mean it's interesting because again is this a horror movie is this not a horror movie so much of what we feel when we're watching horror movies is like how do you not know that this is the point where things go wrong but that is like part of the genre and what i think is interesting is like you can be a fucking crazy bitch liar and not be a murderer you know what I mean like it's still a big jump between those two things and so you can see why someone also someone who's like we don't make scenes around here we're British um someone is like I'm not gonna kick you right out right now I'm not gonna cancel the party I'm not gonna let all of these bitches know that we've had a scandal in our house so you can stay cool. until tomorrow. But... It was bad on him that he's been fooled. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I brought you in here. And But I think, I mean, I watched a TV show um, recently where one person was a big, big, big liar. And it's like, did they do the murder? You don't know. And then it's like somebody else did the murder because of the lies. Um, and so it's like the culpability, blah, blah, blah. But again... We're so conditioned by the genre and by our previous like media experiences a lot of the time to be like, that's the villain right there. But again, if you don't know that you're in a horror movie, if you don't know what you're in, like, of course, you don't jump immediately to murder. You maybe go, this no. person is dangerous. I don't know what they're capable of, but you don't immediately go. Yeah, you don't immediately go, this person is going to put poison in my champagne or whatever. Well, I don't even know also if Ollie knew that he was going to do that at that time. And, like, we can go no. into the premeditation, but I really do think that he had this. I think it was only when he realized that he can't have Wiggle this his way back through, in. Through being closer than than brothers with with. Felix once he realized that like ex having this lifestyle through the closeness with Felix was out the fucking door once he Do you realized think it's the conversation it with Barley I can come back nobody else gets to do that I'm the only one who gets to come back no I think it was his conversation like with Felix I think if Felix right there had been like everything is fine like like, it's okay. I think if he would have, like, welcomed Ollie in, he wouldn't have made him drink I think it was, like, champagne. a crime of passion in that uh -huh. way where it was obviously premeditated where he was like, I can do this if I have to do this, but let me try one more time. And then it didn't go his way. And the disgust, he was so, he was an inch away from his face, the disgust. That he saw and that Felix is, had for him. There's no coming back from that. And so and he was like, well, when, plan B. <laughs> this is when they should have kissed. As like a goodbye. And oh. it would have been a goodbye kiss. 
and it would have been perfect. And also, you're never making out of this hedge maze. So even if you shove me away, it doesn't, what, matter. doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. That I think that could have worked for sure. Like, Let I me at least get my like, kiss before I go. Right. Like, I, do, I think it would have been really poetic, actually. I like how they did it the, this way, too. But yeah, no, I, I, I think that that could have definitely worked. Okay, it's time for Greek mythology and Shakespeare. Here we go. I'm going to say it fast. Okay, interesting stuff here. It's very been well discussed about the Minotaur shit in this fucking movie. If you look, all of the statues are the Minotaur and Theseus. That's what all of them are. The one that's behind Elspeth when the golden light goes on Ollie's face for the first time. That's also the Minotaur and Theseus in a big fight. Um, and the big Minotaur in the middle is obviously the fucking Minotaur. Um, so the story of the Minotaur is this, um, a woman, something happens and she fucks a cow or something, or she's punished by the gods, blah, 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 blah. They make her have a baby. That's the Minotaur. That part, I don't know the beginning that well. Does anyone else know? Not really. It's, something, <laughs> it's like punishment from the gods, blah, blah, blah. She's a Classic fancy gods. queen lady. She like fucked around or something, and they like tricked her into fucking a a bull. They, that's what happened. They tricked her into Trick. fucking a bull, and so then she got pregnant with a half human, half bull child, and they have to deal with it. And it lives in a maze, maze the underneath the labyrinth, underneath the, their castle. And every year they sacrifice people to the Minotaur until finally Theseus comes, a hero, and he slays the Minotaur, but Theseus isn't all good. He then proceeds to manipulate the family, the queen, the the whatever, royal family, and ends up that he becomes the king. Um, And so, I wow, don't you hear a lot of buzzwords that are resonating with your body right now? <laughs> I sure am. But all these people are saying, like, Oliver is the Minotaur. Oliver is the Minotaur. He comes in, and he is like a bull in a china shop, and he shakes everything up. And literally, the Minotaur statue is based off of his body. Like, they literally, like, so literally, yes, he is the Minotaur. And Emerald Fennel said she had, like... She said she had, like, a keyword where she would shout, like, Minotaur, and that would tell him, like, now I need to be the real Oliver for this scene right now, yeah. as opposed to, like, the facade Oliver. But what, yeah, what are I, you saying? I know. I totally agree. I totally agree with that viewing of it, too. But I think it's also much more compelling to see Oliver as Theseus and to see Felix as the Minotaur um, because he is the son of the queen, which is Elspeth. Um, and he's not nearly as evil as the mini Minotaur. He's miniature. doomed to never leave the maze. That's true. He, that's true. There's that too. But also like every year he brings home a sacrifice, which mm. is his new boy. Um, that is his little toy that he plays with all summer and he throws out and never sees again. And that's his sacrifice. And then it's then it's like right then it's like right on the nose with Ollie after that like he slays the Minotaur and takes his place and in the family and then slowly but surely becomes the king of the castle. Um, and I thought that was much more compelling to me. But Sydney, you're also talking about the the Icarus thing too, right? Do you want to talk about that more? I didn't do as much research on it. I didn't do any research. I saw like two TikToks <laughs> about it. About he how. has wings and then he dies. Hello, Monica. Haven't you heard about? Yeah, Icarus? well, yeah. He flies, he flies too close to the too sun. Close to the sun, and He's... he kind of does things that is like you know his parents tell him not to do, which his parents, you know, as much as you know, they Elspeth has a like kind of like a little throwaway line at, when he brings Ollie home. And she's like, oh, like, he's so good looking. And she's like, I didn't really believe he would be. And he's like, I told you he wasn't like a slog. She's like, yeah, but we can't trust your judgment. Yeah, but like, you, you are nice about everyone. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, I feel like they probably told him multiple times, like, you have to be careful about who More you are nice to. Yeah, and he's just so nice to everyone. You're so sweet. You could get taken in by an uggo. Yeah, and he's just like 
so nice to everyone that he flew too close to, you know, his beating heart. The girl boss too close to the sun. The yeah. golden light. Yeah, mm. I mean, what I put in my notes about the his costume was that um, already by the night of the party, he's already an angel. He's already done by that point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good, too. And it, th- there was all these things about um, – with Romeo and Juliet and the Claire Danes one and like she takes the poison and he dies by poison and blah, 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 blah. We already talked about the MGMT of it all. Uh, <laughs> um, but the other thing that I thought was really interesting was the Midsummer Night's Dream of it all. Um, it was interesting. Bro, Smith is like literally dressed as Titania. He's literally dressed as Titania. I don't know if uh, the father is um, dressed as Oberon, but it's interesting because this goes two different ways and I can see, and let me try, I'm trying to find it in my notes, but there's also this idea of Ollie as the changeling boy from Midsummer mm-hmm. Night's Dream. And I thought it more of the, in, in the aftermath of, of Felix's death, which is where Tatiana is in, in Midsummer Night's Dream. She's obsessed with the changeling boy. It was her friend's, who died in child's births kid and it's she's taking it on as her own kid and then Oberon her husband becomes insanely jealous of this child and tries to get rid of him which is literally what happens later on in this movie you know like Elspeth um tracks all of her like my child things on to Ollie because Venetia's fucking dead Felix is obviously dead that's and this is the person now. who made me feel better before when I felt exactly. bad about Pamela. Exactly. And um, and then uh, Sir James kicks him out and is like, you need to go. And so that that really feels like like it, too. But then there is another part um, that was about Venetia and Felix and them playing on to that, too, and how like. When Venetia gets together with Ollie, Felix is so jealous of Ollie because, or like of, like yeah, like the jealousy thing, and so that goes into the in incest thing that you guys were talking about later. So that was another vibe where he could be the changeling between Venetia and Felix, which I thought was super interesting, and also Farley is the ass. Um, <laughs> And the Black fool. Hat Farley. Mm-hmm. He's the fool because he thinks that Emerald he has Sendel. it all. She's really yeah. out here putting her Oxford degree to work. I she know. also read that whole optional 50 book reading list, maybe. Uh-huh. I was impressed. I I don't know. I thought it was I thought that, that was very, very interesting. And I forgot what I had forgotten what happened in Midsummer Night's Dream. So that that was really fun too. And also I am just absolutely fucking dying to have a Midsummer Night's Dream themed party. Oh my God. I can't do that for my birthday party this year because I already have a theme, but I want to. Oh. Um, but yeah, I mean, also that play is so much about like mistaken identity and like pretending to be someone else. Like that's such a big theme in that also. Oh, so. Yeah, totally. So it totally makes sense. But yeah, I mean, I just think that's, the scene where they finally confront each other is is so heartbreaking. You can see their chemistry and you can see it leave. And then watching this for the first time, you're like, oh, Ollie's so sad because he doesn't have a friend anymore and he's getting kicked out and that's terrible. But watching it the second time, I'm watching it and he's just like, I just killed the love of my life. Mm-hmm. And that that's why he's so fucking sad, you know, just like – Sitting with the fact that that has is done and it's happened, and he set that in motion, and everything is different now. Like it's a new phase. There's no going back. So that that made it all the more interesting. Um, this was the person, and then everything that comes after that is like cleanup. Yeah, and then um, just a little bit about the maze because. Next after this is the like heart wrenching scene where they're trying to find Felix the next morning, and I thought the chaos chaos of that was so incredible that the whole house is in disarray. Like, but all he's of the waking up in his staff. bed and he's yes. you know chill, and then and then 
outside venetia and farley are literally wading through the pond like trying to find his body mm -hmm. the, the the fact that the staff are running around and bumping into each other like duncan's completely off his a game that's what's so horrifying like uh, nothing this bad has ever happened like that's his boy you know what i mean um but yeah, another thing that was super interesting, they had the maze made for the movie and it's a real working maze, which is really fucking cool. But there is like just two stipulations or I don't remember what one of the stipulations is, honestly, but whatever. There were two the stipulations. The outside is CGA. It was just the inside that they constructed. If that oh, was one cool, of them, cool, maybe. Cool. No, no. Um, oh. I, I don't. I didn't know about that. That's sick. Um, But it the stipulations for making the maze was that there had to be two ways to get into it the hard way that was like the hardest maze that you've ever done and then the the cop out entrance which is like the the entrance that like once you know what you're doing you're in there and i don't know if this is a real thing and i don't know if i'm just reaching but let's reach okay um there when ollie follows um when he follows Felix into the maze when he's with the girl, he's like stumbling around and he's like lost in the maze and it takes him a long time to get to the center. And so that's what happens. But the next morning, he's like 40 paces behind everyone else. He's still in the house and everybody else is already close to the maze and they all get to the center and he's like one second behind them. So did he take that other entrance now? The like, I can't remember the name of it. It was like not the fool's entrance. The cheater's like entrance. The cheater's entrance. Yeah. yeah that time. Well, Cause like how did he get there so fast? I don't at know. At the end of the night, once he'd already done the hard way into the maze, he had plenty of time to find the best way out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, so now he knows. It's another sign he knows what he's doing. Oh, man. And, and I don't know. I also just think that scene where they all that just all of the rest of this movie i thought was so brilliant but like just the way the that they're like scene. coping hmm? the curtain scene the and curtain like scene. duncan fighting to close it and like duncan being flustered and like duncan having mm -hmm. his own emotional response and, and like the red the light red the red light on them. and the yes. red light and then he should just pouring wine and it overflowing she, and the way she just, just like... keeps pouring yeah so and there's... then Charlie there with his fucking american feelings not yeah. knowing how to keep it toy and british i know if he had just shut his mouth then maybe he wouldn't have been excommunicated for providing the drugs that killed his cousin no um, he would, that was the plan i think that was yeah. the plan 100 percent but uh, something that's interesting about this scene is there's two more foreshadowings of the deaths that are to come, which one of them I think is a reach, but the other one is definitely not. When Venetia is overflowing the her overflowing cup with wine. the wine, it's like the bathtub overflowed with her blood. And then also the Elsa slashes. like chocks, chokes on her food mm. um, in that moment. And that's how she dies later on choking after her intubation tube has been ripped from her, which we'll get into because I have questions about that. Um, Here's the thing, uh, Farley got off pretty light because you know he got to live. <laughs> There's no purpose in killing Farley, but everyone else the is an is an heir. Yeah, yeah. Venetia is competition. Farley is not going to inherit. Yeah, Farley has already been taken out of the line of inheritance. Yeah, yeah. He just needs to be gone. Yeah, he's got to get the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we we're, we're got like a two hour and a half long episode on this, so we'll just skip just to twenty you. minutes more until I say if I like it. We, we'll <laughs> skip to the 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 scene in the cemetery, um, because that I just think that Barry Keoghan is a fucking genius actor. Because like, I mean. We all know at this point, like that he came up with that idea. He improvised that. He mm -hmm. improvised. He was like, "Hey, baby." Okay, hopefully he didn't say, "Hey, baby." He said, to "Hey, his baby." Boss. Can we get <laughs> a close set? Because I don't know what's going down when I'm out there, just me in the grave. Anything could happen out there. It was just supposed to be Anything him like sobbing hysterically. But that was just I think like it a... said on IMDb trivia there was going to be some questionable um, fingering of the grave, essentially. 
Um, and then he was like, well, but I just want to follow where my body leads, actually. So I'll go wherever Barry body leads i'll tell you that right now that's what i learned from this movie i I, can't believe he's dating sabrina carpenter oh my god well she's got that great song so good (laughs) i i just it's so brilliant and the sobbing and then the like like he's really mimicking it like that's why i don't need them to kiss because they have that they have a sex scene in some ways sexual moment you know And something that I also thought was super interesting in this one article I read that was like all about the Greek mythology, um, like obviously being irreverent to the dead in that way is not a part of any of the main religion rituals or anything like that. But there is like something in Greek mythology with like possession with the dead and like being possessed by the dead. And so this can be interpreted interpreted as um, him like, fully trying to like become Felix you know by trying to like bring his spirit into his body even at that point so I thought that was a cool read we all know that this the spirit enters through the dick so it does it comes it's through a a a, a ghost that's where you suck it out and that's where it comes in holy spirit activate you gotta suck it a little it's a ghost docking experience (laughs) the ghost enters through the urethra he probably got <laughs> dirt up all under his foreskin he's putting it in there yeah maybe he was wearing he's a uncircumcised condom. love that right he looked uncircumcised i don't remember mm. i don't know that i think i looked for like the general size because they had well i'm always curious but also they had remarked <laughs> I earlier i want to know what's going on um like, but they I said i always want to know i don't care know? but i i didn't make a mental note of um if it was it looked uncircumcised me british people don't really do it as much as american people do it and, yeah and well he's, he's irish in general. Irish, well, that's yeah. true he is irish he wouldn't irish have the character's dick i don't know irish people oh play God. it really quickly um sorry i don't know why this came out came back to me but the fact that they didn't know where liverpool was and then <laughs> they were like they don't have rehab in liverpool i'm pretty sure that mm, if you get addicted I think to it's drugs a you shanty. just quote <laughs> go to ruin <laughs> like i just Sorry, that was just so funny to me because, like, one of my best friends is from Liverpool. So yeah, Liverpool has her. come up a lot recently. We yeah, love Liverpool. Oh, Shout yeah, out. shouts out to our Tom. listener, Tom. Tom from Liverpool. Um, hey, I know what Liverpool is. Don't worry. We would <laughs> never say that about where you live, Tom. We would never say that. Yeah. I was mad at them for saying that. It was so fucked up. It was so um, What up. about Tom? This movie didn't think about him. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Didn't think about Tom or Lottie for that matter. Anyway, okay, so, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I think I maybe felt like just it talking was about the reveal. The, um, the three gravestones that we see at one point, though, like, I really felt like this would be a family that would have, like, a mausoleum or something, but maybe that's also more American. I don't know. I think it's on their fucking property, you know? Oh, well, that yeah, also makes they sense. They walked like they're like, see you back yeah, at the house, and they property. walked to the bridge where they throw mm-hmm. the rock, where off, they which I thought that was dismiss great... him, like Pamela was dismissed earlier. You go yeah, now. I mean, that was rude, Bye-bye. but also that's a moment just for the immediate family. Yeah. I agree. So, <laughs> but they could have said it nicer, um, or said anything at all. But yeah, I just think just from there, the way that it played out was so interesting like you know that scene with venetia and ollie her monologue is fucking stunning like sydney great yeah. job in that performance thank you, thank you, you did a really great. incredible job um she just... read him to phil her and farley both read him to absolute dog shit in the oh movie. my god it's like i don't think you're a spider i think you're a moth flapping up against the pain that like oh and you're eating us from the inside out like and and i saw this funny little joke that's like oh like this is an eat the rich movie but like literally he he like sucks up felix's cum he's vampiring her yeah her bloody vagina we're getting graphic um so oh is are the reverend of the pod listening to this? I'm so sorry, Andy. Sorry, <laughs> Andy. Sometimes when I said that, I thought, oh no. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's and the just how quick 
you know, Venetia, you know, was kind of giving unstable vibes, you know, throughout. She's having a really hard time. But I don't know. I feel like this last bit is easiest to talk about from after after the reveal. What do you think? It's just it's so interesting how much of this depended on chance, but he really set all the cards yeah. in motion, like a Rube, Rube Goldberg. What is that? Rube Goldberg, Rube Goldberg machine. Machine. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting here because, like, I I guess, I, I mean, I have only watched the movie one time, not four times. Um, So I, and again, I knew what I was watching, so I didn't have the same is there a moment in the maze where he's making the decision to do this or was it always premeditated? I kind of went in with this perspective of he has a plan. Um, but you really see in the bathtub with Venetia where he's like, can I kiss my way out of this basically? Like what are my avenues here for how I can address this? And it's only when she shuts that down that he's like, okay, plan B. Like I see the plan B moment here for sure. Totally. Yeah. I just, uh, yeah I don't know it is interesting though because again I expected it to be more deliberate um and especially with the voiceover knowing what I knew I it sounded deliberate in that moment but then to see in the montage reveal later that he just like sets them down and lets fate take its course kind of at that point um I I'm not I'm not sure someone who's watched it more times than me talk about that scene which uh, sorry I got I got confused when you're saying like the Rube Goldberg machine of just like putting things in place and seeing how it plays out like knowing how it'll play out but he's not like in there making oh yeah cuts. yeah no he just put the he just put the razors Razor next to the bathtub because he was very smart about it he did this all in a way where he didn't actually physically kill any of them except for elspeth at the end which i'll get into that because that's my one extra grind with this movie um but like with the bottle you know he gave it it's to him his and he choice took to it drink. back yeah he took it back and he threw it in the river so it's gone forever yep. like he he thought that all through like with with sir james like he at the at the point where he's asked to leave, he can tell from the get go that James is a little he, he, all over the place. Interesting man. He is all older also. So playing the waiting game there, or maybe he was influential in, in that too. But um, it seems yeah, I Googled from it, what I was like, else, did I miss something? It seems from what Elspeth said that he also killed himself yeah, because he killed she himself. says, she says like She's i'm shocked. surprised he, he waited so long yeah yeah i don't know so, if you could go back and like look at the obituary when we get a glimpse of it and like read it i didn't try but maybe there's something to didn't. be seen there the text seemed very small other than the headline and you still don't really even know how long the time jump yeah was oh either. i just know how long oh, the time jump up. was oh they're in the middle of or the end of COVID when um, it comes back. It's a long fucking time because if you look, all the waiters outside are wearing masks. Oh. Isn't that so interesting? Mm -hmm. Adam noticed that. I didn't notice it. I mean, I, I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe that's just like a weird thing. But like, when else would they be sure. doing that? And 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 he's obviously much older. She's obviously much older. Love her hair like that, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. But like. But like that, a decade and a half, sure. Like a de he he really played the fucking long game, you know what I mean? But he was waiting all this time. He was tracking all of their motions. And, and he may or may not have had a big payoff to sustain him in the meantime. Yeah, yeah he, seems like he did have something well, pretty and he substantial. Probably, well, Sir James paid him off, and then he obviously probably went back to Oxford and probably did well for himself to where he was able to weasel around yeah but he always had his plan you know he knew to move over to where elspeth was he was just waiting in that coffee shop for her typing gibberish you know oh my God, I mean? that was the funniest scene in this movie <laughs> that was it's so very funny. like this scene in um life size yeah. i think right and where she's, she's like, like working <laughs> she's on her computer e. yeah 
I think the thing that's most confusing about this movie, but I like about it because like so many people are like, oh, this is movies bad for class politics because it's like, oh, these people that are poor or bad and they're going to kill you or whatever. And I was like, that is so not the thesis statement of this movie. And if that's what you want to boil it down to, that's totally fucking fine. But I think it's much. Absolutely. The thesis statement of this. Okay. For you, baby. Highfalutin people tell their children as like a cautionary, like nightmare tale. They're like, (laughs) and some middle, don't bring any pores home or (laughs) upper middle class person is going to come in and murder your whole family. So don't befriend the poor. Well, like, I think it is very critical of the upper class. They paint all these people to be fucking terrible people. They're all fucking terrible. Even Felix, I find him to be terrible. Table. She hates her husband. Why? Just because they've been married for a long time. Is that a good thing? She's got her kids. Thank God she sends them off to school so she doesn't have to see them. Like, this is, is it, the whole crew. Yeah. It's making a mockery of them. Like, but you still want it because how could you not? You know what I mean? You still want to be them even though they're terrible. He still wants to be them even though they're terrible. But I think because he realizes that they're so flawed, he knows that he can play them. Yeah. But like, here's the thing. People say money doesn't, like, the term money doesn't, like, solve happy, like, doesn't make happiness. Sure, fine, whatever. But that's just something that they tell poor people so they don't riot. (laughs) Like, I'm sorry. I'd be happy if I had That's actually a lie, yeah. That's actually a lie, money. They want to keep you small. They want to keep you down. Yeah. So, yeah. the rich. I I don't know. But uh, what I was trying to say get at what i lost myself classic (laughs) um (laughs) i think he's not just like this villain because like he has these like gut-wrenching emotional moments throughout it all that are just for us you know as the viewer like when right after felix like lose it felix like is like fuck you you're gone tomorrow and he goes back to his room before the party he's fucking sobbing hysterically for a split second he's like gonna throw up he's crying so hard all he is and then after like when he's fucking the grave he's also sobbing hysterically during that you know what i mean like he i really do think he loved felix and everybody else was fuck all to him but like it is complicated it's not just pure some pure blissful love i'm not stupid well he tells us that at the end i mean in his whole his whole monologue as he wraps it up like he had in the beginning did i love him sure was i in love with him questionable um and then at the end he's like by the way bonus um i also hate that bitch yeah i mean the line between love and hate is strong it's envy it's envy well, and also, I think one of the reasons why he was like, I hate him was because he did Because I loved him. He and he, well, he threw him. me away. Him. And he threw me away. And he still, like, even though he caught me in a lie, didn't love me unconditionally. He's like, I changed so everything I about him. myself to be what you would want. And that still wasn't enough. I was exactly what you wanted. I did this for you. I gave you the version of Oliver that kept your attention that was interesting to you. This was who I was for you. Mm. I came into this house a version of myself that would be mocked by your family and looked down on by these people. Oh, I'm poor. Or my family has addiction issues. Oh, my dad died. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Like, I am listening to you guys sitting there gossiping about how terrible my life is when I'm literally outside the door. And I didn't have to be that version that would be mocked in that way. But that's what you wanted. I think that's interesting. No, it's really interesting. I don't know. That's why I like this movie so much. But I'll say my one qualm before we get to our final things in all of our segments. Why did he fucking rip out the intubation tube? I just, like, it doesn't make any sense. He's been so careful with every fucking thing else. Like, every thing else. Like, how would he get away with that? Like, was he just so... I think because it doesn't matter. They're rich. He's one of the rich people at this point. It's home care. Nobody else is seemingly around at all. It's one of those things where now that he has inherited all of the wealth and money and there's no one around to point the finger at him, he can be one of the rich people brushing a tragedy under the rug as opposed to having to really 
have she's been sick for months you know what i mean like i don't think this is really the thing where they're gonna call the police to investigate like they had to for okay Felix's all right death. okay that's fine then that's fine he's that, he's that one of like pissed he's married to off. a lady you know i mean i assume she's a lady i don't know if she inherits are they married her husband. they're not married oh she just signed it over yeah yeah but i yeah. think because like you think they fucked for sure it very much felt like a romantic tryst to me, which was also kind of the incest vibes of like, you didn't You're actually son, fuck my but... son, but you had this thing with him and you did fuck my daughter um, and you are my son and you are my child. Yeah, I think that is also kind of the like. It's messy. Yeah. You were flirting with me even before that. It's so interesting. Oh, man, I love this movie. <sighs> Segment time? Segmento? Sure. Oh, wait. No. What? No. What? He is. We have to talk about him naked dancing around that house. Oh. Well, that's how. How could it be gay? We're going to combination <laughs> it right now. That's the gayest thing i ever seen. I love it. <laughs> Apparently, he was supposed to, at the end, in the original script, he was going to um, be sitting at the breakfast table and Duncan was going to come bring him a plate of runny eggs. Like, he didn't just inherit the house and the money. He also inherited the staff, which was crazy. Um, and then it was also going to be like, assumed. what was the thing with the runny eggs earlier? Which is so funny because Iowa Debris um, letterboxed. For this movie, she just wrote, like, all that, and he can't eat runny eggs. And also, like, bitch, you're the one that ordered them over easy. Well, then order them over easy. No, he ordered them fried. He ordered them fried over easy, Fried over easy. That's runny. Yeah, but when when it's fried, I think you're supposed to flip it over. That was sunny side up. But runny is that's true. I guess that's the slight difference. I but I was like I was like what the on fuck? purpose because I only I, want a little goo. Ugh, over medium is too much for me. I thought the same thing though. I, I was like you them ordered them over you ordered them easy, but he said fried over easy, and you are supposed to flip it over for that. I know things about eggs apparently. Yeah, I always flip and my so, eggs. I love fried eggs. Yeah, that's actually the I, supreme way to eat an egg. I only I like, like scrambled food. eggs because otherwise they freak me You're out. You're just like my dad. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the breakfast ending, they were right to change that because. Yeah, I hate that. The, inheriting the staff would be weird. Also, there's no get way rid that of Duncan, Duncan would be rolling with everything. Yeah, Duncan would just be like, Duncan, Duncan, your sorry. Egg, sir. Duncan's also, amazing. Like, but he's gonna fucking riddle this shit out. He's smelled something that his shit stank from the very first moment. But yeah, I it mean, it needed to be like the house is empty, no one's here. This is my domain, such to the degree that I can be naked, my dick's flopping around, I'm in every room. Well, it was just so funny. Like he got rid of all the voyeurs. There's obviously he reduced the staff or made them fuck off because he could do that, and there's no one there watching him, and he can be a fucking asshole and irreverent to these people that he's made sure are dead like i just loved that there was that little game box or whatever with the marionette versions of all of them it's in the beginning um but it's just like it says where they're just like elspeth venetia and felix um and he has each one of their fucking dead rocks on there so so sick and I love that it's the inverse of the uh, entrance to Saltburn. It's the same tour. It's the same route mm. that Felix takes him on at the beginning, but he's going the opposite way now. And he's doing whatever the fuck he wants. And you can see all the opulence. It's not about, and it's mimicking that. The The camera's following him now. It's about him. Felix is gone or he's Felix now. Okay, do you but think also, he had suspicions about the rocks when he had to do the one for his dad? And we know his dad was not really dead. So he was like, I'm not throwing this in the water. That's bad luck. Or he's got a bad arm. <laughs> or he's like, I'm throwing this in the vomit because actually that's also thematic for my little lie so I've concocted. Gross. That was so gross. Okay, but he's never been more relatable than uh, running around his house and like running around his house naked to music and then also just like railing lines of cocaine that was so funny that was so fucking funny. i'm like so true bestie <laughs> okay 
here's what's going to happen. It's segment time, and we're running through these because this is a three-hour-long episode, and we've never done that before. So we're going to do we them. Have two minutes. And to we have done do it them. before. Chelsea, we're going to do we that. Fa- we're going to do it fast. Did I like it? it Wait. <laughs> Wait and see. <laughs> Um, so how could it be gayer? This movie's so fucking gay. The way that it could be gayer is that they actually they kiss, kiss, but I'm fine that they didn't. I love it's so gay. It's so gay. I loved it. <laughs> um, you can tell that this has been a long episode because my Jacob Alordi hair has slowly been falling out. Melting. <laughs> <laughs> what other gay things do you have to say? I oh I, I have one, but you guys. Here's the thing we got. Uh, Oliver and Farley, that was gay. Mm-hmm. I think that, that Elspeth that. is canon lesbian because she is so not into her husband. She um, just has sensory issues. She's yeah. like, that's my... Okay, did you just see how... She's also um, just Ethan a little Cohen... autistic. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, Ethan Cohen and his wife, there was just something that came out about them where they were talking because they did drive away dolls together. And she's like, when I met him, I told him I'm a lesbian. And now we have a non-traditional partnership and we both have partners outside of each other um so like you know sometimes you can be a lesbian and just marry a man and it's like that's my buddy actually and like maybe like you have to maybe you don't that's not anybody else's business yeah and also if we believe my bride's head revisited theory which is canon um she he's gay <laughs> Or it's a lavender hat, marriage. Or he's a bisexual man. Whatever oh my god, it's it may a be. lavender marriage. And um they, you know, it's it's England. It was different era. She was a lesbian for a while, but he needs to inherit his titles. He doesn't want a scandal like his sister running off to America. He's gotta marry a lady. It's a lavender marriage. Exactly. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, we're moving on. Where would Matthew Lillard fit into this movie? <laughs> Duncan. He Duncan. would be great as Duncan. Yeah. I thought, yep. He'd Done. be so great as Duncan. He's he just like giving little looks. Duncan. Duncan. Done. Or not. He would be, <laughs> hold on. He'd be really fun as the like professor person that we see at the beginning, oh, which was Oliver so and funny. Farley like meet. You, know what you I mean? read like, every oh, book on here? Yeah. You read the whole I knew Bible? your mom. <laughs> Fuck up. I knew your mom. Oh, my God. oh I'll tell uh, her. No, oh, no. Really like, I didn't actually know her. her. Yeah. Like, that would be funny. Because he wouldn't be British to do that. Know what I mean? Like. And also, they set up that, like, oh, yes, we're all watching these people from afar. But most, some of us are harmless. Some of us are just going to be a teacher one day. Okay. Next one. We're moving on. Dumb bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb bitch is opulence and um the rich. I don't know. Dumb bitch is class dynamics. Dumb bitch is racism. Or, um, some bitch is. It's not Ollie. He's fucking so Ollie, smart. Yeah, smart I think, bitch. Smart I think that's bitch. fair. Felix is. He did get caught in his lies, but then also he got away with his lies ultimately. So. Felix is dumb for um, you know. Why would you be a big time liar though and leave your phone unattended? That is a little dumb bitch behavior of Oliver. But also, why wouldn't you lie and say both your parents are dead? Because then. Just I gotta save name. one to kill off later, just in case things go south again. Both my parents are dead. I don't know. The dumb well, he pulled it off, though, so yeah, it's hard to give it to him. The friends we made along the way. <laughs> the dumb bitch is all the haters of this movie. Yes, there. There we go. That feels good. The dumb and bitch is the, the people who thought this was horrible, too. Do I like it? Knives out of fives. <laughs> is it 245 Before? yet? It is two forty seven, but well, honestly, we know, who knows for the we audience? We talked for what a little bit is. in the yeah, beginning. We might so, cut yeah. things down. So, but we're just about on track. Actually, we thought that was a joke, but it turns out that it wasn't. Um, God damn it! Be fast <laughs> with your reviews, folks. <laughs> on IMDb, this movie has a seven point one out of ten, and on Rotten Tomatoes, it has seventy one percent fresh from critics and seventy nine percent fresh from audiences. That said, we also just got all of the Oscar noms, and I don't think it got a single one. So, which I is a crime. Sorry, we're it's a crime. expecting that. I think it's fine. I think it kind of a competitive year this year. I think um, it's a competitive cinema- year. I think at least for like cinematography, I could have seen that. It was yeah. a beautiful movie. It was yeah. a be- it was like, a gorgeous film. That's what I think it should have been nominated for. It was nominated for five BAFTA awards, so it's gotten some nominations. It's gotten some wins. Um, 
there you know it's it's being rec- it's always nominated for three critics choice awards Ooh, um, i know was Jacob nominated Lordy for two got Golden nominated Globes. for a bafta and that's just for his fam- fan cam edit sorry <laughs> he got nominated for a people's choice award jacob alordi so that's the real honor that's all that matters choice hottie uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean it i I can understand why this movie wouldn't be nominated for an Oscar because of all of the rip roaring discourse. That was like a lot of them, a lot of people just saying it's stupid and it's bad. Um, And that's, those are people who didn't do six hours of research on it. Dumb. (laughs) The dumb bitches, those people, like we said. Dumb bitches. (laughs) But uh, Chelsea, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, Did I like it? I enjoyed my watch. Um, like I've said about 500 million times, I did know what I was getting into. And so I don't know what my experience would have been like without that. Because of that, the ending didn't have the punch that it might have had. Um, I don't know if the ending would have really hit for me if it had been a successful surprise, as opposed to something that I knew we were marching towards the whole time. The way it was revealed felt really flat for me um and really like anticlimactic after everything that he's just like oh by the way i'm telling you my story and i'm speaking to you elspeth and i'm telling you oh, everything. i love this that. is my reveal blah 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 like that didn't quite hit for just also the like energy of this scene was different um i and the montage reveal like again i already knew what i was watching and so i didn't need to have it laid out for me Um, so who knows what it would have been like otherwise, but I had a really good time watching. There were a lot of things that I noticed that were gorgeous. The doppelganger moment I loved, the golden light, Farley sparkling in his first scene, um, after he's been caught at the party, at his birthday party, where he's, like, been dismissed by everyone, by Farley, especially in that moment, and then he's, like, standing there next to the pig, slowly roasting. And it has I thought that eye. was a great one. Mm-hmm. Did you notice that? It was Yeah, Barry's the blue eye. eye. Yeah. I thought that was a really good one. Um, Felix is already an angel, even that night. The horns, th- he has horns. I mean, they're, like, deer horns. They're not minotaur horns, but it reminded me of Horns, the movie with Daniel Radcliffe. Um, mm-hmm. speaking of short king weirdos who love to take on a freak bitch role, um, the red lighting, like I thought it was gorgeous and I thought there was a lot to engage with here. So like, again, who knows what it would have been like otherwise, maybe it would have been knives out of fives for me if it had been a reveal. And I was like, ah! but I'd give it like a four knives out of fives for sure. Okay. That's a win. Yeah. You want to go next, Sid? This is fucking five out of five. I love this movie. I do not give a shit if there's no real plot. I do not care what this movie has to say. Like, this movie is beautiful. It's got a freaky little dude. It's got a baby girl tall dude. It makes me want to have one tall boyfriend and one short boyfriend. (laughs) The ideal thruple. The ideal (laughs) thruple. I want one tall boyfriend, one short boyfriend, and they're both weirdly obsessed with me i want a boyfriend here's thing, if and you're another not, boyfriend and i want my boyfriends to i be want boyfriend. my two boyfriends to be boyfriends but here's the thing if you're not one if you are not there's two things that i need you to do as somebody who wants to date me you gotta come with me with like ollie level of attraction right be obsessed like i want you drinking my bath water <laughs> two is anybody else on Pookie TikTok? Oh, God. I am aware of what you're talking about. <laughs> I need that kind of cringe devotion, which I think if Felix would have accepted Ollie back, like, Ollie they would absolutely <laughs> start calling up. Felix Pookie. Oh, God. A classic okay. Pookie outfit. Pookie, your outfit is fire. Pookie loves a hat. I just... I don't want you to explain it to me. I'd rather not know. Thank you. (laughs) Okay, I'm going to go 
It's also five out of five for me. I just had so much fucking fun with this movie. I haven't felt this excited about a movie in a minute. It made me want to watch it four times. You know, that doesn't happen that often. There's so much going on. I also actually got nervous to watch it the third time because I was like, what if this is the time that ruins it? No, I was like, I have to like. I have to do this justice for the podcast and I really need to put my whole my whole Valentussy into it to bring back that joke from two years ago. Um, <laughs> so I was nervous to watch it again because I wanted to do the movie justice on this podcast. I just think there's so much into it. I'm really interested in what Emerald Fennel is bringing to the table. The fact that she wrote and directed this, I thought it was really fucking good. People who said there's no plot, bitch, okay, whatever. Who cares? I do. I think there is a plot. I don't know. I think, and that's part of it too. It's more. It's like atmospheric, but not in a vapid way. Like in a way where like you're experiencing what Ollie is experiencing, which is like the whole tagline is we're about, all about to lose our minds. Like that's it's a it's an experiential film in a lot of ways because you're put into his shoes and you're experiencing the op the opulence with him. And you're and they really wanted the fan it to be a cam of Jacob Elordi. Yeah, I thought it was really fucking well done. And luckily, I wasn't totally spoiled, so I got to have that experience. I do have my qualm with the Elspeth death, and that sure maybe that reveal is part of it. But I think the very very end bit is so fucking brilliant that it brings it all back together. So this is five out of five for me. At a hoot and a half, I will watch this again. But maybe I need a break because I did watch it twice in. 18 hours so that's a lot of times <laughs> um but we did this movie for another purpose as well mm-hmm. Not we did only. and i will say um even though you guys thought i was gonna be a hater and then i wasn't even a hater so like i get bonus points for that but also i was very gracious because i wanted to do while you were sleeping for the same reasons but well, do you want to explain some- i'll let you say what they are Oh, do you do you want me do you want me to say or do you want to say? It? I I I didn't want to jump on your moment and take it from you. I felt like you you had already started, but I just okay. wanted my kudos. No, you deserve your kudos. Chelsea, you, you deserve your laurels. Your flowers. Thank um, you. but we did this because one of the main themes we've talked about throughout this whole movie is obsession. Ollie's obsession with Felix, how he wanted to crawl inside of his body and wear his skin. And isn't that a sexy concept, obsession? <laughs> it is, actually. Uh, and we're coming up on February, which is a month that has Valentine's Day in it. And last year we did love month or whatever the fuck it was. I didn't really put my whole uh, romance month into that one. Romance <laughs> month. Um, and we could have been a little bo- bit more pointed um, <laughs> that time around. That was me. Was that was like my tragic idea. romance month was the core of it. Tragic romance was, romance. was it. But then we kind of lost the plot a little bit at the end. And, you know, I love so you guys were like, plot. we have to do Casper. Okay, we don't have time to get into <laughs> Casper. Hey, we don't have time to really do that movie. But this month, we are taking the love and we're taking it to the fucking extreme and we're doing obsession month. And so it will be four movies all about obsession. One might be called that. Um, but who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Um, but we're kicking it off doing something that I think is a really, really fucking funny bit. <laughs> we're kicking it off with a movie that is a classic obsession film. I've never seen it. We're doing Misery, the classic Stephen King novel and movie with Kathy Bates. Bates. Um, but the funny little part about it is that we are having a special guest on the podcast, which is our biggest fan. Yeah. Um, his name is AJ. I don't know if he's allowed us AJ. to reveal his last name. Oh, but uh, he's such a firsty lasty. I know. We'll we got to double we'll check. We'll see for in. next episode, maybe. We'll see for next episode. I'll just is... bleep every time we say his last name out. He is a firsty AJ, lasty, please. though. That's so he true. He is a firsty lasty. <laughs> But AJ is a man that um, is connected to all three of us through tangential means, but I had never met him before, and neither had Sydney. And I went to school with him fourth through eighth grade. So Exactly, but I did not know. Monica I went to UCLA went to college with, him. with him. I went to college with him, but I never met that boy in my life. <laughs> um, but, oh, I think he started um, in third grade, maybe. I always get that wrong. He's going to be bad. Wow. When when we did eventually meet him, he was introduced to me as a fan of the podcast, a longtime listener. Um I can't wait. What forced him to explain 
well, where that started. Yeah, yeah well, I cannot where wait. That he can own up for his own <laughs> actions himself. Yeah, exactly. So, well, we won't spoil Wow, but it is a really funny story. And yeah, so he, in my mind, he's our biggest fan. Um, and I'm sure yeah, in number his one mind too. of the pod, AJ Bleep. AJ Bleep. <laughs> he came to us at Alex, the lawyer of the pods, Hanukkah party, and said when am I going to be on the podcast? And we said never. And then we negotiated this. So <laughs> I think it's super fun. And you guys will get to see his obsession with us firsthand. I'm very excited to be flattered. <laughs> I love fans. I'm just saying. I love our fans. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, that's that's it for Saltburn three hours later. Um, a little under the gun. Uh, what is our poll question? More than an hour longer than the actual movie, which is not usually what happens with our three hour episodes. No, usually the movie they is kind two of line up. hours and, and 11, 11 minutes. minutes long. Did and he we cut have... out 50 minutes of this recording? <laughs> it's just it's less than an hour more than the <laughs> thing, so it's fine. Here's the thing. We had to rant about Jake Valorty for how long. <laughs> it's fine anyway gorgeous um, everyone loved our midsummer film. episode so it's fine it um, was popular so the people actually was... crave three hours yeah exactly um anyway so um our poll question is would you would drink you lick cum Jake? Out of the <laughs> are you no way that we both thought said that i no think we were all way. thinking it <laughs> the only logical <laughs> Would you would you drink bleep out of your out of the, your lover's drain? I don't know. We'll figure out a way. Yeah, to, it doesn't have to be to Jake Lordy specific. It can just be like, is there anyone you would do this for? Is there yes. anyone you would do this for? That's the have question. you ever My lover, that. Jacob there was, Lordy. Um, there was that gamer girl who was selling her bathwater for like yeah, that gamer a lot girl, of money. She could be one of the poll options. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll do that in post. <laughs> And why not? You know, we just gave you three hours of our lives, three hours on the dot. Why You're not welcome. A five star review on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. Um, you can say, "I'm so obsessed with you. So glad you have a whole month obs- uh, devoted to obsession." I can really languish in it. It'd be nice. Um, that's just an idea. You can also you can say, "I'm something the more number normal. one fan of the pod." Yeah, you can come for AJ's life. I don't know yet what happens in Misery. I'll tell you guys next week what that review should be, I I read the book, so we'll see. Uh, Oh, perfect. I'm excited to to watch it, too. Um, And, and, you know, why not also follow us on all of our social medias? We're at Spooky underscore Tuesday. And as I said, we're all dressed up very sexy as the characters from the film. So why not watch us on YouTube? Subscribe, please. I can't believe I have to say that. Like and subscribe. (sighs) Like and subscribe. (laughs) Like and subscribe. We're also on Facebook and Tumblr at Spooky Tuesday Pod. And if you made it this far, God damn, thank you Here's for a listening. Kiss oh my God, for thank you. you so much. Bunch of kisses. I feel very so similarly to how Ollie felt for Felix. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear the slurp. Yeah, I couldn't hear it. Oh my God. It doesn't Did want that it. work. Oh, I got Monica's. Oh, got to get more spit in there. I'm so sorry. Um, that's <laughs> see you next Tuesday. <laughs> Bye, Spooky. <laughs> I was a lesbian for a while, you know, but it was all just too wet for me in the end. Men are so lovely and dry. Spooky Tuesday was created by Monica Height, Sydney Thompson, and Chelsea Duff, and edited by Sydney Thompson. Our gorgeously spooky tunes are all thanks to Tamra Simons, who you can follow on Instagram at Captain Tamra. And our podcast art is by Mary Murphy, who you can find on Instagram at the underscore moon underscore OMG.